it going, everybody? Welcome back to Nifty Dimensions. I am Rizzo, your host as usual. And today I'm bringing you a treat. Uh, somebody that you might you might notice from the show Whiskey Neat, ESPN's Whiskey Neat, um, on Houston Radio, and one of my longest friends that I've had on this planet. Uh, please welcome to the show Todd Groove. What's up, Todd? What's up, man? How's How it going? You? Good, good. How awesome. you doing? Nice. Great. Awesome so to see you as always. Yeah, you too, man. This is pretty interesting. So. Uh, just to catch the viewers up, like while we're while we're bringing you in here, like so Todd's one of my I've known Todd since fifth grade, literally. Um, when I first moved to New Jersey, he was like one of the first good friends I made and I'm still friends with. And uh, yeah, so he's been he's the most requested person to come on to Whiskey Neat from what I understand. Right. Like, aren't you like the most requested? At least that's what, that's what that's what I don't know about requested. That's what Chris likes to say. I think he does it just to get me back on the show. But like, I, I don't really think people care, but who knows? Either way. Pretty cool. Yeah. I love the show, by the way. I, I've watched a lot of episodes now. I've really got to catch up. So teach me a lot. Yeah, It's been fun. Chris has done a lot of cool stuff. And, you know, I'm just happy to come on as a friend and hang out and drink some interesting stuff, which I think is what we'll get to do a little bit today. Yeah, I'm excited for that. And everybody watching, I'm a total lightweight. Todd's like a total, Todd knows what's up. He's like a freaking guru with this stuff. So we figured it would be a fun little episode to uh, have me test some stuff out. And uh, yeah, Todd, why don't you tell everybody what you've been up to? I know uh, you're, you're in Texas and I know you, know you got a lot going on down there. What have you been up to in the drinking scene and everything? So uh, the pandemic has been interesting because everything was shut down for so long. Um, just kind of starting to ramp back up again. So uh, myself, along with a, a small group of people, we run the Houston Bourbon Society, which is a Facebook-based group um, of about 12,000 people, I think we have right now. Um, so it's a pretty big group. And uh, we use the size of the group to bring in cool whiskey. Um, we pick single barrels of whiskey, rum, cognac, um, tequila, all kinds of different spirits. And then we sell them in local stores. And uh, so myself and a couple of my business partners also run an event called the Houston Whiskey Social. Um, that's just, we're calling now just the Whiskey Social because we're going to start doing it in other cities. And that was a few weeks ago. Um, yeah. And then Chris, um, who's my business partner on both of the things that I just mentioned, also has his ESPN show, uh, Whiskey Neat. Uh, yeah. where I, I take absolutely no credit for that show. I'm just a guest that comes on and drinks with him. But um, yeah, so I, I've, I've gotten myself somehow like super involved with all this stuff. Yeah. It's been fun. And then the artwork too, of course. Hell yeah. Uh, the artwork on the, on the whiskey labels. Word. Yeah, that's, I think that was, the, that, I guess that's what really caught me up was like, I was bugging you because you're an artist and you, you make amazing art. And over the years, you've really like stepped up your game to where you've been doing things that I didn't even really know what you're doing. So I was like, hey, man, I'm into crypto and NFTs. You should make NFTs. And, you know, and then it kind of went from there where you're like, well, here's what I'm doing. And yeah, I, I love Whiskey Knee. It's, um, it's funny. And for somebody like me who doesn't really know what's going on in that whole world, it's really informative. So I, I like the vibe that's going on over there. So yeah, shout out to Chris for the show. Like, uh, I knew it wasn't your show, but I've seen you yeah, on yeah. there enough to where I figured like, <laughs> Dude, like you've been on there a lot and uh, your episodes are always classic. So, yeah, it's awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. it's always fun. Yeah, yeah. So but yeah. we definitely need to talk more about the NFTs, though, because um, I mean, we had our initial conversation and I mean, I still I understand how it works, but I guess I want to talk to you about the type of art I would be creating. Like what type of angle should I take to try to get something that's interesting? Because a lot of the art that I do, like people seem to like it. Mm -hmm. um some of it is is not fully original like you know some of it is for some of these stickers we do for mm -hmm. labels like people want to do like pop culture references so i'll take like existing stuff mm -hmm. and like you know it's more graphics design like i don't draw very much i mean i could draw a little bit um but it's more kind of taking something and making something else out of it um yeah now i've gotten more into original art lately but mm -hmm. like what i said to you is all the stuff i did and, and we've put stuff on t-shirts and, and that's been fun to see but um but like who would want to own it like as an nft like that's because a lot of times i have words on it because it was for a certain release so right, i guess right. I, I want to know like what type of stuff sells and where should i kind of be angling my work to get into that realm yeah well it's a, yeah i'm glad you brought it up um all right so i i do have a couple suggestions and i was thinking about it ahead of time um because of what you're into and and everything i feel like um you have a good concept of like top shelf some of it is behind you as we speak. So like, because you like the top shelf, 
I feel like there's there are projects that, like there are some projects that's like okay I put out some NFTs. There's a website called OpenSea. OpenSea is like the open marketplace where people mint your NFTs. It's what's called lazy minting. Lazy mint is when you you make your art. All right, so regardless of the style, I'll get back to that. But say you make your artwork and you have it uh, you have it set up. Um, what you would do is if you want to like just get started you, for free and not spend gas money, you know, the Ethereum gas money to, to mint this thing, you do what's called a lazy mint and you just put everything up there and then you could list it. And um, literally it doesn't cost you anything if it's so done correctly. So does it have to like be registered as an original piece in some way, like it's scanned in and it's, it's uh, you know, so that it doesn't match something that's existing. I'll be honest. It's still the wild west, but over the course of six months, I've, I've only been into this for about six months now total, and it's like a decade. It was literally like being in a time machine and 10 years went by. When I started with it, it was like, here's some cool little profile pictures that, you know, your avatar, buy one. And now it's like, here's a metaverse. You can buy land here and sell your NFTs <laughs> and rent out places for virtual reality concerts and all this stuff. Um, but for you, um, I guess it, on the style, I don't know. I guess that would really depend. But yeah, like legally, a lot of things, a lot of people have gotten away with stuff. But like full disclosure, as time's been going on, um, more and more people have been stopped that use things that weren't theirs. So copyright yeah. has finally started to enter its way into the right. Because because imagine if something sold for a million dollars and then then they got hit for copyright infringement and now yeah. it belongs to someone else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're entering into this during a really interesting phase because what's happening is there are collections. I'm not going to name the collections because they're really controversial, but there's been co collections that come out. People love them. They get into them. And maybe just one FT, one NFT might have just a little something that's too controversial in it, just or something like goofy, right? Um, and literally, they'll wipe, they'll, they'll cancel the whole thing. Everybody who's holding loses out completely so I, i've yeah. been noticing so there are things between copyright right and so, so the legal realm hasn't fully caught up yet not yet no it. because you know it, it gets me thinking like i said as as like a i call myself a graphics artist because mm -hmm. again like i i can't sit down and draw like i can't paint you know i can draw a little bit but it's more like to add elements to existing pictures and things right. like that yeah. Um, so when I've gotten into doing design work for people, like for my buddy, I did um, his hot sauce, his line of hot sauce, and we designed labels. Of course, it had to be original, you know, legally done um, because it's going to be sold commercially. So um, that was my first time doing it fully, like not borrowing anything. Because in yeah. the past, I would like Google like a frog. Of and course. I would, like, just grab a piece of art and then I would change it and stuff. Um, yeah. And this was like, you know, you have to go on um, like Shutterstock, you know, and, mm -hmm. and pay for it. Yeah. And uh, so I wonder, like some of my designs have elements from Shutterstock, which I've legally purchased mm -hmm. um, as part of a design. It might just be like a sunburst pattern for the background, you know? Right, right. Um, but that belongs to someone else that and I'm like legally sort of like renting it and you can use it for commercial use. But I but it says nothing about NFTs. So like mm. I wonder if like that's a, a question that I, I'm sure there's I don't know if there's an answer to, but like, yeah. Like buying stuff on Shutterstock, graphic artists. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is how people, when they design, like when you're talking about whiskey bottles again, like when someone designs that bottle, there's not someone sitting down on a piece of paper, like with like a ruler drawing a straight line. Like they're just taking right. like elements, like sure. borders and like flourishes and stuff and putting them together into an original design. But that stuff doesn't belong to them. So I, I just wonder like if someone could come after them and be like, hey, that's my background. Um, yeah yes you bought it from me and you know it was for unlimited commercial use but nft is not exactly commercial use right well i'm gonna ask some of my nft friends i have a lot of them on twitter i'll probably ask a guy named doug fowler he was on the show um he's totally an nft maximalist like he doesn't give a shit about bitcoin or ethereum or any meme coins or whatever he's all nft all the time he literally does it as his job. He creates them, he sells them, he buys them low, sells them super high, and he knows the ins and outs of it. So Doug, if you're watching, let us know, man, hit me up on Twitter or whatever. But yeah, I would like to know that too. This has been a big question because um, even like in the beginning for me, same thing, by the way, like I'm not very artistic. I play guitar. I, you know, I sing a little bit. I, I play drums and stuff, but like 
by no means can I go and like paint you a beautiful picture or like sketch yeah. out something great. I really, I have to work really hard to get my, my, I have something called crypto fluffs. It's like little cute, like dogs and animals and stuff. I work really hard on those and it's a lot of work for somebody like me because yeah, I'm not too good either. Um, and then there's other people that, yeah, I don't know. I guess, I guess what I'm saying is um, I, in the beginning I had to cut and paste and you know crop it you know like just grab stuff yeah. from the internet and just i mean i started learn. with paint like literally microsoft paint is how i how i started for years and it wasn't until i got photoshop that i was like oh shit i can like maybe be a real artist here yeah it's the most fun part and this is i've reached out to every single one of my artistic friends over the last six months because there's a realization that happens with nfts and i know i know it's kind of controversial like some people you know they there's a lot of weird stuff going around about it, but all that aside, because I'm not into the FUD anyway, um, there's so many different areas like, hey, you're a musician, check, you should make some NFTs, you know, like, um, hey, you do this visually, uh, audio wise, anything like that. There's so many avenues. You can make a poem on a piece of paper, take a picture yeah. of it. If it's a one of a kind, they own that poem on the block. I was going to say, it'd be cool as a musician to take like your musical chart, like your sheet music and just take a piece of it, like a popular part of a song and be like, here, here's just a picture of this. Hell you know, yeah. And this now, you know, that would be cool. That'd be great. And that's, that's the artistic freedom that it's created where people that get into it at first, man, I just, I'll tell the viewers this too. I never said this on the show, but at first I was totally against NFTs. I'm a purist. Like artistically, I'm totally a purist. It took me a long time to get into electronic music. Uh, same thing with NFTs. Like I felt like this is not pure. It's going to ruin it. And then I slept on it, woke up the next morning and was like, oh my God, this is artistic freedom. Like this. Yeah, the, the concept of it to me, it just, it reminds me of, I think we had this conversation when you first called me about NFTs where I said, um, I feel like I've missed the boat on getting on the ground floor ish mm -hmm. of things. Right. And every time, like when I got my first iPod way back and I was like, dude, this is amazing. Like this yeah. technology is game changing. And I didn't do anything about it. I just kept my iPod and I should have bought Apple stock at the time. Damn. And like Bit Bitcoin, Both of us, like, dude. What? you know, Bitcoin, like, you know, my first, uh, the, what I saw most, my first impression of it was that scammers were emailing me and telling me that they wanted, they were like demanding one Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and at the time I was like, one bitcoin uh that's like two thousand dollars like not you know this is crazy yeah um and then i remember when it was like fifteen thousand, and i was like i guess i missed the boat right like i guess i guess i missed it and then and now and, and it's like 60 I, something thousand about nfts like it's going to evolve there are going to be legal challenges that, that are going to come in and just blow it up yeah, but yeah the concept i think is solid and it's interesting and uh it makes a lot of sense in the grand scheme of like crypto and the future of uh the financial industry you know fintech and uh mm -hmm. so like yeah i think it makes a lot of sense i i, I haven't done anything with it yet <laughs> but what? uh i feel like it's it's not too late um it's not dude. because it's still early enough that it's when it's too late is when everybody's talking about it like with like right. dogecoin like by the time like you're you're like aunt calls and asks about it like that's how you know it's like it's now everyone is on it it's a little too late absolutely even my stepmom <laughs> who hates crypto was like hey you asking my dad hey uh you know maybe we should get some doge or shiba and it was like oh yeah it's totally mainstream at that point if she's talking about it yeah sure all right, all right so two quick answers <laughs> or at least one quick answer and then i want to get to the next little stage of this because where this is heading bro this is this is intense and I'm glad you asked about this because I immerse myself with this shit and it's it's amazing. So, all right, so uh, let me pull it down right here so I could look at it. Um, so there's a project called the Prometheus Project. The Prometheus Project was founded on a simple premise to unlock the gateway to exclusive high value products once only available to ultra high net worth individuals. So like this is like top shelf NFT stuff where it's like you get a pass. I'll just give you a quick little rundown of like what is the Prometheus Pass is your key to having the first mover advantage in our upcoming projects. Um, so basically I, I won't read through everything, but like you get priority access, which is like being on a white list for their NFT drops. So holding something of theirs now might get you free valuable stuff in the future or like, you know, you, you'll be in a VIP list and all these things. Mm -hmm. And like, so keeping it top shelf exclusivity is key 
in NFTs as far as if you want the whales to be getting in on your stuff and you want it to be like Bored Ape Yacht Club. It's a club. It's an elite club. If you hold one, you hold the rights to this. You can make T-shirts and sell the shit, whatever you want. Um, so like that was the first phase of like, oh, man, this is major utility. It's not just a little Wait, bit. When you own it, you can do things with it. You do whatever like you want. It's your art. It's yours. You uh. own it. So like that was cool about Board Ape Yacht Club. So then some people started to do that. Well, wait, hold on, because because mm -hmm. like like I said, like on Shutterstock and, and like eBay and like Etsy, like pe artists sell their artwork, um, but often it's just a license. It's like a limited license. Um, right. So this is giving up like full rights to it. So yep, not so all, not everybody. It. Yep, but look into Board Ape. Yeah, exactly. You whoever buys that one because they're not cheap. Um, but that's not a normal NFT. Normal NFT, the artist still can use the art normal and it's just nor yeah like like they will tell you like i have a profile picture nft some some were given to me as like birthday presents and stuff and in the collection it'll say like you own it you could do what you want with it or you don't own it this mm -hmm. um but like a good a, a thing that you'll notice is people will buy them and then make it their profile picture on twitter and it's like i own this this is mine some right. so it really differentiates with every collection but a lot of the big ones have learned that people want to own it they want to do something with it and then imagine mm -hmm. imagine or owning like a bored ape or a crypto punk and being able to do whatever you want with the the like you know the image well yeah it. because then there's a commercial like potential with it Mm -hmm. rather than just as an investment it's something you could actually use if it's a cool piece of art like a logo or something like you could use that absolutely um so so to fast I, I think forward. uh go ahead yeah yeah i, I was gonna say pause because mm -hmm. i think you need to pour something oh, okay. before we move to like if you have phases set up like we need to like have a drink between each one all right and, and you can continue talking but I, I was gonna say try go with the um the jack Daniels first okay uh hbs um, jd so rye Yes. Right. So generally we go, we start with lower proof. So this one's 94. Um, oh, nice. This is what it looks like. Oh, there you go. All right. It's got um, the seal so, so this is a single barrel, which means, so like the regular Jack product, it could be like hundreds of barrels that they mix, they blend it because they want it to taste like Jack Daniels, right? So like okay. the more barrels you blend into it, the more it's going to taste like the product that everyone knows. Okay. This is one barrel. So it's a single barrel. Um, and this is also a rye, so it's not um, the regular Jack um, whiskey, like a, like a bourbon. They don't call it bourbon, they call it Tennessee whiskey, but this is a rye, so which means that it's made up of at least 51% rye in the mash bill that they make it. So it's a little bit of a different taste, but this one's really good. Um, probably doesn't taste like any Jack Daniels that you've ever had. So right. yeah, you just need a little bit. You don't have to pour them. This is how much I, I poured. Okay. You don't even need that much. And I would say just like, because again, this stuff, this is lower proof and it's, it's still 94 proof. So uh, how much? So just enough to taste, you know, you don't, that's fine. Okay. Um, and when you taste it, just kind of like let it touch your tongue and then kind of like wash into your mouth. You don't like, obviously don't throw it back like a shot. It's okay. going to burn. So you just put, need to taste it. Like just a little bit. And then I kind of like breathe through, through, through your nose, through your mouth. You kind of get different flavors. Hmm. Ooh, different, right? Yeah. Oh my, it's gonna be a fun afternoon for me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So don't don't feel the pressure to finish anything because I want to taste taste the stuff. Oops, I have a bug in my. Jack. Oh, nasty. The bug, not this. This was interesting. Must have been in the glass. All right. Let me seal this up. Wow. Woo. All right. I'm smart about this. I'll move this one back. So that's rye. That's what that's what rye whiskey tastes like. And this it's a little sweeter than a normal rye, but um, that's why I like this one. Nice. That's a Houston Bourbon Society pick. That is next level, bro. Um, I drink like if I drink, I usually get like IPA beers. I really don't have much drinking experience. I don't know if you remember from when we were younger, but I never really was never really. Yeah. that big of a thing but everybody watching guess what todd is actually the first person i ever got drunk with uh just to tell the quick tale hey, keep keep talking i'm right here because i'm grabbing something that's relevant to this story oh cool and i just so, i just realized i have like right here 
Nice. So everybody watching. So Todd and I, like I said, we oh shit. So we've been <laughs> friends since fifth grade. So you know, um, there there was a lot of exploring the world and getting into some crazy shit. And um, I don't know what grade it was. I guess for the sake of like just covering my ass, I won't say exactly how old we were. It was probably seventh grade. Something like that. That'd, okay. that'd be my guess. I think you're right. I think you're right. So seventh grade. We, we, weren't, we weren't drinking booze in elementary school that I remember. I mean, maybe like a sip or something, but like yeah. not. No. I was still. People. Yeah, yeah. No, when, when I was that young, I was still like straight edge. In my mind, it was like. Mm-hmm. Oh, that stuff's bad, man. Like um, I remember when you were straight edge and oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was mean about it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but so all right, we're we're all right. So we go to our friend Joey's house. Joey's parents are are away for the weekend. And um this was my first time. I don't think it was your first time. I think you had drank a couple times before that. Same with Joey. And so it was like, all right, let's let's get going on this. And that was fun. Um so yeah, what did we drink because I feel like that time one of the other I don't know it might have been this but I, I actually bet because when I picture Joey's house that's around when um, Snoop Dogg's Doggy Style came out. Gin and juice. And we, yes, hey, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> we we probably had gin and juice. We Tanqueray. did. <laughs> we had we had Tanqueray gin. I hated it. I still don't like gin. Um, yeah. And we had Mad Dog Twenty Twenty. Um, and then we had some we used other to do a lot of vodka orange juice too that totally i still like that let me me put this away full disclosure you know i I don't mind a little vodka and orange juice um but yeah not a big drinker thing it was sunny d we would would go buy sunny d at the store Uh, and and empty half of it and fill it with vodka for sure bad yeah yeah so that's just a little just to catch everybody up on the story because um yeah so you got to imagine i'm watching whiskey neat on espn um radio and podcast on youtube right um like yeah that's, i watch yeah. that's what i watch it all the time i don't listen to it and the, the, the video is on on youtube and then yeah just just the audio on espn radio nice yeah i mean it's just um it was just really interesting that one of my friends the first one of my closest friends who i was you know was the first person I ever got drunk with is doing a show on whiskey and um yeah what's cool man is like your sense of humor um, still comes through like you've always had this like dry like very distinctive sense of humor and it's funny to see it in the show because I know you so well so like it's kind of classic but we're gonna jump into the metaverse real quick everybody because I want to tell Todd about some of the craziness going on and how far things have come in six months I can only speak personally and for the nifty dimensions crew here but I can tell you this from NFTs, using it as an avatar where it's just a picture, which is great. I have lots of them and some of them are worth a lot of money and some of them aren't. Still cherish them. But go all the way through to now 3D characters started to come out over the course of time. Now 3D characters can be brought into VR and AR. And now what we're finding is everybody's talking about the metaverse. And I'm not talking about like Zuckerberg and Facebook and all. I'm talking about like the metaverse was a thing before facebook did decided to do that that's why facebook snagged that and like used it so like the metaverse is basically like fortnite is a game and when you go there it's like this whole area imagine and i'm, I'm not just saying this to you i'm saying it to everybody just to give like a little explanation of what a metaverse is because a lot of people have been asking so like there's different games or metaverses one is called sandbox one's called decentraland sandbox is kind of like uh like minecraft kind of vibe very blocky uh more a little more for kids and um yeah so getting into a metaverse at first you could have you could have spent four hundred dollars to buy some land in a metaverse that very same land is now 14 15 grand at the bottom floor and up to millions of dollars because you own land on this new real estate that everybody's jumping in on right now so a little announcement on the show um there is there's a, a new metaverse that's been coming out. Um, it's just it's just in the works now called Leapin, L-E-P capital N, all one word. Leapin has 603 ownable galaxies, and that's it. You're and and you you don't buy land, you get an entire galaxy, 
and you literally get to build with the developers. I even think they're with Blender, who's you know has helped put together some of the best games out there, um, and either Unreal Engine or Blender. I can't remember, but the point is, uh, we decided to buy a galaxy, and we bought land in the metaverse called Leap In, and it's literally you don't just get a little spot. You you have unlimited land for your galaxy, unlimited planets and everything. So we're literally going to have like maybe like a planet where you could go to for like exclusive like DJ sets and like maybe like a virtual reality concert where like- you're So you gonna... can do whatever you want with the space. Hell and, yeah. And, and, and can create like, not just a game, but like the content Absolutely. place that can always change. You could sell your stuff out of there. You can rent out places. Say I have a volcano. I can rent out the volcano. There's a secret door in the back. And when you walk in, you go into the secret underground volcano, like, concert place or you know whatever who knows the, the ideas are like unlimited but all right so now i bought a board ape right year uh, uh last year or six months ago or whatever now i own a board ape well guess what if you own any 3d nfts like say you buy one of the 3d ones that blends into this and you can use your nft if it's a 3d one in the game in the metaverse mm -hmm. as your character um so then then it's like, okay, well, which, so then there's, there's stuff called like um, meta travelers. It's very uh, esoteric, I guess, but it's very cool. Meta travelers went from point, I don't know, a few hundred dollars to thousands of dollars now in just a couple of days, because meta travelers are one of the first brands to enter into the leap in metaverse. So yeah, I'm definitely self-promoting to let the viewers know that we're in the metaverse now, but at the same time, I thought it'd be really cool to explain to you how far it's come just in, in a little bit of time. Yeah, that's that's wild. Um, I mean, it's, it starts to make me think of, um, what was the movie about the 80s, um, uh, Ready Player One? Did you see that? Oh, it was great. Yeah, I love that movie. So yeah, it's like a, you know, a, a multiverse, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. But it makes me think like, stuff like this is great for people who are entrepreneurial and can go into it and make something cool out of it. Yeah. But also like, the first thing I thought of was like, okay, this, this sounds interesting and it's awesome because it's unlimited potential. But then what about the people who have all the money who are going to come into it just to dominate like the big tech companies and, and game producers. And Absolutely. like, like in that movie is what it is. You know, it's the big game company. That's the one that like becomes like Microsoft of that world where they're like, we're in charge and we're going to like kind of dominate this. Um, but money yeah, I mean, talks. that's really interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're not lying. And I'll tell you the truth. You're right. You're absolutely right. And you're already on it. Um, Meta Travelers um, is it's has a game coming out like it's part of the game. It also has a cartoon or, or some kind of show coming out for it. And it's from the writer of Guardians of the Galaxy. So they're already in with like Disney and stuff. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So absolutely. Money talks, yeah. bullshit walks just like any other day. I'm just glad we got a spot in it before it skyrocketed you like we got lucky no um, that's awesome yeah yeah so they've been they've been well, selling you, it. you know even if you did nothing with it you own it so a lot i mean if, if, even if you decided you know i i would rather just sell this to this company for x dollars than right. try to develop it myself it's real estate it's a whole galaxy yeah this is the first metaverse to offer unlimited potential like that every other place is like okay you can have this little bit of land for a lot of money and that's all you get. This is different. Mm. The people who get in on this, I'm really excited about it. My excitement you see right now, totally real because we just got into this. This is so like how a do you, new... how do you create on it? Like what's the programming, you know, what's, what's the platform to, to create? Literally. Um, so you, you, we, as a, as a original deed holder, um, they give us access to the development team that they have. And we work together with their development team to build our metaverse whatever way we want. So they have all they have a 3D realm already printed up for you to start with. And then it's really just a matter of um, what you want to do with it. And then you're with the Blender team and all. It's either Blender or Unreal Engine. I'm pretty sure it's Blender. But either way, that's top notch shit right there. And you're working with them to develop yeah. um, to develop it. So, yeah, it's interesting. It's still in the works. It hasn't even popped off to start yet. We're still waiting for that initial, like, all right, here we it's go. It's funny to hear Unreal Engine. Um, I was just watching on, I think it was Netflix. There's this, uh, it was a special about video games, I think. And it was talking about the guys that created like Duke Nukem. 
mm-hmm. which led to like doom um right. and and it's like it's it's crazy to like to see that 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 was like the first 3d game back then by the way i poured the um angels envy rye if you want to pour yeah this i'm clean one. all right i'm gonna clean out the glass real quick give me a second and and this one actually you don't have to worry as much about cleaning it because we're going from rye to rye so it's okay not a deal all right um, so what do you got here where are we at angels envy rye angels so envy. this is one um that unlike the first one that i showed that you can't really buy um mm-hmm. this one is on the shelf so and this is like a 90 dollar 80 or 90 dollar bottle i think i think um, this, okay it's my little sister too. you see like the, oh, the angel wings on the back nice yeah um, so so this is rye that's finished in uh rom casks so and and when i say finished i mean like so it aged in an oak uh container basically and then they put it into a cask that used to have rum in it so it picks up the kind of oh, rum flavor oh cool Hold and on. uh i don't know if you've got to tell like jenny always makes fun of me when i talk about tasting notes and like what i smell and stuff she's like i smell gasoline i taste gasoline <laughs> um th- this one it smells a lot like maple syrup to me and it, i think it tastes like maple syrup and I, I, it comes from the rum it just gets this like sweet flavor right i'm excited um, that sounds tasty while you're pouring that um so, so yeah this it's interesting to see the 3d technology come from that first like duke nukem game to <laughs> yeah. like talking about a multiverse where you can like buy pieces of land and stuff it's kind of crazy yeah it's nuts and what's next we, we used I'm... to play that in an electronics class remember we uh Hell yeah. we would try to like set up doom on the network because that was the first network game yeah um, right. where you could multiplayer all right, let me get a little bit of this in there. So um, this one's a little bit higher proof. This is 100 proof. Okay. I'm excited. I think it drinks pretty easy, though. Okay. All right. Uh, cheers. 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 I'm going to taste it first. Cool. Yeah, this one's really sweet. This is one that I recommend to people. Mm. For anybody who's watching and wants to get into whiskey. Now, it is a little pricey, um, but... It, it's really good for somebody just getting started because it's got a lot of sweetness to it and despite being 100 proof it's really good yeah and you can also like so we're drinking neat but i, I was also going to say to you like you might want to get an ice cube or something as we move into the higher proof stuff because it's just going to be too much like everyone starts with ice or water like i have a water dropper here where i just have uh put a few drops in there and it it just you know proofs it down and makes it easier to drink god i am ready i have ice i got extra yeah. water i'm ready right. for you today <laughs> Because I know I'm a lightweight. These first couple. Now, you should try it with, uh, like, add a little water and just see what happens to it. Um, Because it'll change the flavor. So there's no wrong way to drink whiskey. I think that people who drink a lot of whiskey tend to go to neat. Because Mm -hmm. room temperature with nothing added is really where all the flavor is. Right. It's like with wine or beer, you wouldn't ever add ice or water to it. Um, I mean, I know you you don't want a a beer to be cold. But with whiskey, you actually... um, you lose a little bit of the flavor when it's cold. Okay. You kind of can't detect it as well. I thought that was awesome, by the way. That tasted mm-hmm. amazing. Uh, I think yeah, that's the one. Good. My little, I sent a, I sent the picture you sent me of the bottles to my little sister because she's all about like bourbon and whiskey, mm-hmm. um, and like, um, and and she, I think that was the bottle she was like, "Yo, I want well, some." Well, so. Of that. The, the, the regular Angel's Envy looks just like this, but it's not okay. green. A lot of times in whiskey, when you see green, like yeah. for some reason, that's the color that they use for rye. Oh, okay. Uh, but the, the regular bottle looks just like this, except it's not that color. I think it's like brown or something. Nice. Well, just in but, case she does watch this episode, shout out to my little sister, Christina. I uh, hope you appreciate this episode because, yeah, she's, she's definitely way more of a connoisseur than me. Last time I was at her house, she tried to set me up with something like really uh, some kind of bourbon that she was like, oh, you're into this. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, bring it on. <laughs> and I had no idea what I was in for. And oh, man, it was I'm like, you give me a chaser. Like she looked at yeah, me a lot like, of the that's uh, the thing. Like people, a lot of people in bourbon, they start off with the low proof and like water and ice and they go to neat and then they just want high proof. So like and then it's like, oh, it's 130 proof. And like which is just crazy to think about. Like, I remember when we would get something that was a hundred and we were like, damn, like that's, that's insanely strong. And now so, like, I'm kind of at the point where a hundred, I'm like, yeah, you know, that's kind of a good starting point. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I could already feel it guys. Uh, everybody watching, feeling real nice, a uh, little warm in the <laughs> belly, a um, little extra cheerful. Um, I might, I might like disclose things that are secrets. No, I'm just kidding. 
Um, yeah, I tend to true like quality alcohol tends to work like truth serum for me, where I'll just like tell you like my deepest darkest shit um, out of nowhere. So hopefully that doesn't happen today. But uh, <laughs> small yeah. sips. Yeah, I'm, I really have been taking it light, but it's that's that was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So what else has been going on with you, man? I mean, you're you're doing all this stuff. You're you're you know what I mean? Like what has changed for you? Like we're both Yankees from the north now in the south. Curious, like um, what has changed for you the most in, in going from the north to the south? Like I know you like it better down there. I, I don't want to speak for you, but just based yeah. on the conversations. No, I do. I mean, I miss my family and friends and I miss like, you know, sandwiches and pizza. Oh my because God. that's the one thing of the week that they don't do as well here. But the food is amazing, like in, in Texas. Like we get everything. Um, the people are nice. The weather's better. It's hot in the summer, but I don't care. Yeah. I, I would take that over the cold and the, the snow, which I hate. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know, man. It's, it's a, just a different lifestyle, I guess, here. I, I mean, I know, like, not to get political, but we see, I'm sure the rest of the United States sees a lot of the stuff that's going on in Texas and it's like it's wild. But I live in the city um the city is a city so like when i moved here i was surprised like coming from like philly as a city um i I was like is it going to be a bunch of cowboys and like you know strong accents it's not like most of the people here have the same accent as we do because i think your accent is pretty like neutral right i know that we have certain words that we say but um we don't have that new jersey you know the expected accent i know only Um, when i get mad kind of normal here yeah 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 so yeah, it's, it's pretty like, I mean, there are definitely, I can't say that it's the same because obviously there are lots of differences here, but uh, yeah. I don't know. I like it. We, we created a new life here and, you know, Jenny's business is doing well. I mean, I just moved to a new job. The whiskey stuff is, you know, this was my first year as an owner in the yeah. whiskey social. And so now we're starting because now that we have a team instead of just Chris running it, um, we're looking to expand and go to Dallas. We're going to do an agave social. So Ooh. one of the things that I, I picked, this will be last but, okay. uh, is uh, it's mezcal it's actually called pechuga i've never had um, mezcal. Which I'll, I'll explain when we get there okay um, but so we're gonna do an agave social too so just get a, it's fun because man like like all things like this podcast it brings people together who are like-minded and have similar interests like for me everyone likes alcohol um i mean mm-hmm. i know that there are people who don't really drink a lot but it's just a fun way to get people together and um okay. and having conversations about other stuff i mean this is kind of like the entry point um and it, I've met a lot of cool people through this. That's awesome. Yeah, I got to say a shout out to your wife, Jenny, too. Everybody watching, I've known Jenny almost as long as I've known Todd. Um, so, yeah, tell her I said hi. That's that's cool, man. Uh, Which is still weird that we got married. I know, yeah, I know that's like a, not a new subject anymore, but right. weird. It is weird. It's awesome, though, man. <laughs> it's it's good stuff. Yeah, and just to, to go back a second, um, I'm in South Carolina. And, um, yeah, not many people... They know I'm not from here because down here, the accent's pretty thick um, in South Carolina. Like, uh, bless your heart. Like, you'll hear bless your heart a lot. Which Um, you know what that means. Oh, yeah. That that means, like, you suck. You poor soul. (laughs) Right? Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Like, oh, you you poor man. All right. Um, Yeah. Yeah. No, I learned that. But at first, I didn't know that, you know, because I totally was wet behind the ears and I had no clue. Mm -hmm. But over the time... I've I love it down here. Granted, it's boring. I am in a particular area where all my favorite bands just don't come through here. So I got to go yeah. to Atlanta or I got to go up to like uh, Charlotte or Asheville in North Carolina um, in order to see anybody cool because ain't nobody coming through South Carolina. It's always like some but do country. You like that, though? I, mean, I know that that's that's a negative, but like, do you like kind of being in a place that is not like where we came from? you know, growing up in South Jersey, Philly was five minutes away. Like New York was an hour and a half, like Atlantic city, DC. Like, I mean, you're just in the middle of this like Metroplex. Do you like being kind of in a quieter place? Yeah. It depends on when, um, I found some, like I'm near mountains and that's huge for me. So I'm near waterfalls and mountains and I I could literally get, and and that's something I miss. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, but there, there are things, there are things about um the the north that i will always miss look i i come from punk rock and hardcore and heavy metal and that was a particular scene especially in philly and jersey and new york back when we were kids cbgb's was still open where the ramones got started and all these things that heritage there that is deeply embedded into my soul that will never go away and because of that 
um, you know, I'm a 43 year old dude that's still going and, and playing drums for a metal band that I just met, you know what I mean? Like recently, because there's this <laughs> desire, the, the passion and the integrity of up north of things like that is unmatched and unparalleled anywhere, um, in my opinion. Um, so that part, the fire that is the Northeast, um, I miss that. But at the same time, it's exactly why I will never live there again, because there's too much yeah. fire up there. And everybody competes for air and talk time up there. And they don't even realize yeah. they're in a big competition. Yeah. Yeah. But I also, I mean, what you said that you're 43 years old, um, you know, I, I think that we're the first generation or I guess maybe it's, I, I hate to pigeonhole and say just us, but like, I feel like growing up, like we were taught, like when you're an adult, you become an adult, like the games and stuff, is not part of it. Right. Um, but we grew up with games our whole life pretty much. And we grew up at the beginning of the internet when it became like a thing. Um, and uh, I mean, I have a thing on my desk at work that says, don't grow up. It's a trap because I, I mean, I really think like, I mean, what are we talking about here? You just, you just bought a, a, a galaxy um, in a, in a multiverse. <laughs> I know. Um, and, and it's an adult thing. Like that's yeah. an investment. Um, but because yeah. we, we, we turned in the things that we like into that, into something that, that is, uh, has value yeah. outside of enjoyment. Um, which is great because like, I, I hate the idea of adults. Like right. that just sounds boring. Like why we can, we can still do the things that we enjoy. Why do we have to say, well, that's for kids like games. I mean, if I spun the camera around, there's a Nintendo 64 over there with yeah. Mario Kart. Um, like why it, it's fun. Why would I ever not play? I'm with you. I, I do believe that it's just the older generations that didn't get it. I think as time goes on, it'll pretty much be forever that people our age and, and beyond. I mean, shout out to my mom. My mom played Nintendo till her end of days. Like she was obsessed with uh, Game Boys all the way through. You know what I mean? So some I think some it's it's over time. People are getting more and more like it's it's not like, oh, that's a kid thing. Like people realize you know, real talk. People make doctor's salary playing video games now or better yeah. you know or just having a youtube channel talking but I, about I also it. think part of it is just natural evolution of technology i think with time like if you go way back like people spend all their time during the day like farming and hunting because like that's mm -hmm. but now we have yeah. everything's to the point where like you don't need all that like we have more time for enjoyment we, or, right. or you should if you're building your life the right way right um, right so as time goes on like it's going to be hopefully more time for, for things that we like to do. Yeah. And, and now that just happens to be this. It happens to be like online. Yeah. Virtual yeah. Virtual stuff. Hell yeah. It reminds me of a quote. One of my friends say to me all the time, quit your job, start your career, you know, save, save your, save the world. Like basically like working for Joe Schmo from Idaho only works for so long. You know what I mean? Like, which is, and it's cool, like much respect, but like you always, there's always, you know, that fire to, to do more and, and keep pushing it. And like in these times, uh, yeah, like you, there's so much to offer now with, with how many, I mean, this is like the internet is just coming out and like go buy as many, you know, domain names as you can. That's what's going on right now. And so like, you right. can, and, and all this stuff, like to bring it back, like is, is, uh, you know, it's an opportunity for people to get in into something that I think is still relatively ground flourish and uh, and mm -hmm. make the money that you need to not have to work for someone else, Absolutely. which I hate. Yeah, um, yeah, same. You know, I think everybody wants to just do their own thing and, and do what they what they want to be doing. Of course. And I'm not sitting on top of the world uh, as free as it sounded right there. Like, for sure, I still have to work for somebody else from time to time. Sure, um, of course. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying right. I'm not, I, No, I just, and I have a job that I love, but yeah. I, mean, I think everyone would prefer to not do that. For sure. For sure. At, at least you love your job, though. That's uh, yeah. way higher than a lot of people I talk to completely hate it. Um, but as long as I've known you, man, you've always loved your job. So that's that's awesome, dude. Well, so like I, I, I don't know, like I, I hate to get like too far off the, the path. And, and uh, I know the like our conversation is supposed to be about one thing, but like it, it just reminds me mm. quickly as I can. Like yeah. my philosophy on life is that, you know, you are your own God. Um, mm. If you whether you believe in God or not, like you are in control, like you can always take a step to get to what you want, whatever your goals are you can't just sit back and and say like traditional prayer is like basically asking for like a miracle where it's like if you want to get some somewhere then go do it like if you want to like do well in crypto then do the research yes read 
watch videos, throw your life into it, everything you have to do, and then act out there and buy stuff and take chances. And and like if, if you don't do that, you can't just sit back and be like, man, I, I want to get rich. Right. Um, like you have to like, and, and that applies to everything in life, not just this. Like if you want something, make it happen. You are in charge. Don't blame other people. Like, so that's been like my thing for like the last couple of years. It's just anytime there's something that I want to change in my life, I, instead of like blaming other people, it's, well, what do I have to do to get there? Or like yeah. some impossible thing, just do it. You do it. You, no one else. Well, cheers. Now we definitely got to drink more because that was the <laughs> most poetic thing that's ever been said on this show. Hands down. Totally agree with you. Yes, absolutely. So what are we drinking? What's next? Because like, all right, let's, uh, let's stay in lower proof before we jump into the real bangers. Um, okay. So this is, uh, this is Glen Ranji. This is a scotch and this is called Signet. This is another bottle that is uh, readily available. Okay. Again, this one's a little more expensive. This is a, like a $200 bottle. Okay. Um, so I, I got this one because for people who aren't in the scotch and they think that it's just like smoky, peaty, you know, like gross. Um, this is such an awesome bottle. Um, it tastes like chocolate and coffee. Um, so hopefully Ooh. you like those things. Yeah. Because that's what it's going to taste like. And right. so this is a lower proof. This is only uh, 92. So this is actually the lowest one so far. I think. Okay. It's all strong to me, which is funny. Yeah, it's, it's still strong. But, but yeah, this, one, this one's interesting. Yeah, you can kind of like swirl it in the glass and it kind of will help you smell it okay so what i'm drinking out of for anybody who cares um this is a glencairn and you can get these on amazon for like 10 bucks nice. um, you can buy them in stores but these are good for whiskey it helps like it's kind of fluted so it helps with the nose it yeah. kind of brings the smells into your into your nose better than a regular glass i i have a, a big version of one of those downstairs but it wasn't uh there's there's a, a fish living in it so that wasn't <laughs> gonna happen today. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but I, I got something that's good enough for now. Um, it's working. Um, all right. So just a little bit in here, and yep. this is okay. Keeping it light, folks. And yeah. So the, and the nose is such a big part of what you taste. You know, like if should you I, hold your nose and drink this, you're not going to taste anything. Okay. Should I ice this one, or is this still like hold off on the ice? Um, take, take the first sip with the, I always say, take the first sip neat and then add mm -hmm. ice and, you know, swirl it around and then taste it again. So taste it like this first. This tastes like coffee to me. Like, especially after I drink it, I breathe out of my mouth. That's where oh, now, I get like the flavor. I taste it now. I didn't taste it when I first drank it, but the breathing part for sure. Yeah. I always say like, take a sip. And breathe in your mouth yeah. and like kind of breathe out of your nose and your mouth and you kind of get the flavor. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Wow. Woo. Yeah. Fire. Um, <laughs> <laughs> shit, dude. All right. Add the ice. Let it sit a minute and then take another sip. Interesting. Yeah, just see. one. Just one cube is fine because there's not much in there. Yeah, ice will always, it's just going to change the flavor because it proofs it down. Um, but it tends to make things sweeter as the yeah. proof comes down and like kind of less harsh. Hmm. Right, right. I totally sense that. And it'll just, you know, as the ice melts, it'll change. Okay. Nice. I like that. And this, as so, you can, go ahead. No, no, you go. Um, for somebody like me, the only taste difference was when I breathed afterwards. I couldn't like be, there was no sweetness. So it was like, I like that maple one that you had me try as far as flavor so far. But, um, the smell of that one was like legit. Like, um, I don't know. It just, it was interesting. It's, um, it's very malty. Like the, the type of, uh, malted barley that they use makes mm -hmm. it have that kind of chocolatey flavor. Mm -hmm, chocolatey mm -hmm. smell coffee i mean they're all kind of in the same realm um so something i do when i'm like writing a review or trying to take notes on something there's something called a flavor wheel that you can right. look at and uh because you know when you see people talking about their notes on this stuff and it's like very fancy and it's like what i don't get any of that it just tastes like alcohol right. um the more you drink obviously you start to pick up more subtleties but those flavor wheels are awesome and you can google it for any spirit like flavor wheel for bourbon and uh it really helps to like it helps you to taste things 
because you can look at it and be like, I don't know what I'm tasting. And you're like, Oh, apricot. Yeah. That kind of like makes sense. Right. And then um, the next step is to like start connecting it to like not generic things, but like something that you ate, like it tastes like uh, the biscuit with like raspberry jam. You know, I know that sounds crazy, but like, right. It, you kind of start to get there, especially when you visualize it. And like, if I say to you, Oh, it's going to taste like chocolate. It's just so easy to get that then. Yeah. The power okay. of the mind. Right. Right. Yeah, that was interesting though. How it doesn't taste like it at first, but when you breathe, that was yeah. Even the, even um, afterwards, like I I still taste it a little bit. I like that though. I love coffee, so I'm all about it. Mm. And remember, like drinking this stuff neat is is definitely like you know sort of expert level. Like like I said, normally it's good to start with ice and um, <clears throat> and water and drinking it in a cocktail and kind of getting used to the flavors and stuff. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So the, um, you just had the, the social, right? What did you, you said it was the whiskey social? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, we, we had about 1400 guests plus about 200, 200 plus vendors. So we had like over 1600 people and yeah, it's wow. just a place for people to do this. Like it's, um, I think we had 70 tables nice. so you could just walk around with the glass and, you know, try stuff. Like every table had a bunch of different bottles and, um yeah it's kind of like a fancy event like people dress up and it's it's fun it's a good time cigars outside nice that's cool yeah that's that's interesting i had to ask and um let me ask you this man because there's gonna it's it's one of the topics that obviously has to come up here but uh crypto are you into any crypto i i know you i know you're into a little bit but what do you like and what kind of stuff have you been looking at so I'm so basic with it. Um, I think I mentioned to you before that I, I bought like going back to the conversation about getting on the train at the right time mm -hmm. um, early enough. Yeah. Um, Doge, like, I mean, it, it started with, um, it was, um, what was the, the video company um, that was selling like crazy? Uh, not Blockbuster. Like what was the GameStop? GameStop. Oh, GameStop. Yeah. Um, um, so like the GameStop thing was happening and because like, I'm such like a student of memes and like that world and like, you know, on Reddit and, and like, uh, Imgur, um, like I started to see GameStop stuff and I was like, what, you know, what is this? Like, what the hell is this? And then like, I started reading more into it and I was like, this is really funny. But at that point I was too late. Like I, I was definitely too late. I'm glad I didn't buy anything. Yeah. But then as soon as that was dying, people were like Doge, Dogecoin. Right. And I was like, oh, immediately I'm, I'm on it. Like, cause people were like, that's going to be the next one, man. Like, just trust me, like, you need to buy it. And so I did um, and, and pretty early and I forget what I paid. Um, but it was, I was not super early, but early enough that I made good money on it when I yeah. sold most of it. Um, and I watched, I waited until Doge day, like 420. Oh, I remember that. And, and like, <laughs> so like, you know, I, I sold that morning. Like I woke up and I was like, done like it was at like 39 cents or something at the time yeah um, and uh so i sold i sold uh most of what i bought and i kept my initial investment in it and and that initial investment is still in it nice um, and it was 500 bucks cool so um yeah so that was my first crypto um you know again i wish i had bought bitcoin when i when i knew that it was going to be a thing um so then you and i had a conversation like a, a month ago maybe and, and I was definitely late, late as far as the way it's performed in the last few months on mm. Shiba. Um, right. I bought it like when it had, when it peaked, like, and I yeah. don't know what the price was, but like, but the way I looked at it was like, I don't care if this is going to be a thing, it may peak, have peaked right now. And a bunch of people made a lot of money, but like, if it's going to be a thing and you said this has like more staying power, I was like, you know, forget it. You know, I'll just, I'll buy it. I'm going to buy it now. Yeah. Um, and it, it hasn't done great for me since I bought it, but right. something like that I buy is more of a long-term holds. Like I see yeah. it as like, Hey, if this turns into a thing like this, uh, it'll be a good investment. And that's, Absolutely. that's the extent I downloaded Coinbase as you, as you recommended. Cool. Um, so I, I'm, I'm definitely looking. Um, and I know you mentioned like other, uh, platforms that I need to get in on to get into the really early stuff yeah. um, before it blows up. Right. Right. Yeah. There's, and there's levels, you know what I mean? Like, Coinbase is, uh, I love Coinbase. I'm on there all the time. Um, but yeah, there's, there's totally levels. And just to rewind to Shiba, like I've made, I've done that before. I bought something called Fag. It's Feed Every Gorilla. It's, um, it's a, it's a decentralized exchange site that it, they got, a, it has a lot of utility. It's not a meme coin, but like I got that and 
Um, I was still pretty new. It was one, I think it's the first low cap crypto I bought. So like lots of zeros, there was like 10 zeros to lose, you know, to hit a penny. And I bought it when it was super high because I didn't know about like technical analysis or like, I didn't know the exact way to go about buying. So I bought it super high, like you did with Shiba. Then when it came all the way down, I bought, I spent the same amount of money again, or mm -hmm. I don't know. So dollar cost average. So whatever high price I paid now, I just got the super discount. So I leveled it off somewhere in the middle. So at least that way, when it does go up, you know what I mean? I, I made up. And is that because off. you have faith in it? Like you still think it's like, even though it may have dropped that you feel like long-term it's, it's going to still be a thing. Absolutely. I never, I never cover anything on the show. Um, that I don't honestly believe in, which when I'm just saying like, I hold it and I, I'm holding it because I, I do believe that there will be utility to it. And more than that, uh, more than its usage and whatever they do with it, it's got such a cult following that I learned from Doge just like you did. It doesn't always need to have like a utility yet. All it needs is to be popular in this day and age. That's all it takes. And what do you think that the, that the designers and, and like the creators of this stuff when they're when it blows up like that do you think that they're taking any of that and investing like truly to make it like like with doge it was never really a thing like yeah did, i mean there are people who are just going to cash in on this rather than say hey let's take that money and like let's let's make this a thing dude great great thing to talk about because i need to talk about this more on the show i have been rug pulled many times dude um yeah it's hard to know even when you think you know you gotta you gotta are they doxxed is the team doxxed do you know who they really are or is it just like a cartoon picture of it says like mm -hmm. johnny b yeah. or whatever you know what i mean like yeah um which is, is all it takes for something to blow up like it's, yeah it's a joke i mean a joke we've we've learned that a joke can, can become a billion dollar business literally <clears throat> so an empty yeah. billion dollar business literally and then everybody loses their ass the the last interview i did uh was with one of the greatest living artists of our time, his name's Android Jones. And Android Jones and I were talking about this. It's disgusting that people are manipulating the market so bad. And then they don't care that somebody's losing their ass, you know, when they pull the rug. Now, granted, I've never invested anything I can't afford to lose. So like, I'm not going to lose my ass on it because I didn't put my ass on the line, you know, and that's my mm -hmm. biggest recommendation to everybody on the, that ever watches the show. Don't invest what you can't afford to lose and treat it like a trip to the casino that just takes longer mm -hmm. to, to get your return, you know? Yeah, I don't know. It's it's kind of messed up not to bring the FUD into the show, but yeah, like they have they have created a market that people are afraid of now. And I believe that's why there's so much hesitancy. It's also, um, I won't dig too far into this, but there's a weird, I'm calling it NFT gate, but like um, there's this weird, like the gamers of today, there's a weird, the, the, some of the media has been saying how bad NFTs are and it's, it, it's like bad for the environment and all this stuff. So people took that bad as, for the environment. Exactly. It's like, what, what? what? Um, but some people believe what they hear and they don't look into it and they, so there's been a weird there's been a lot of weird like uh, pushback in the in the gaming community against crypto and NFTs. And like I I'm I'm friends with game developers. I'm in a new game coming out on December 3rd. It's on all consoles. I love gaming. So I not I'm not going to knock the gamers. I'm just going to knock the people that don't get that. Like things change. The future keeps moving. Those tokens that you get in a game on your phone or in a game on the computer or on a system, those will now have value that you can get real money for later. Like you only win with this as a gamer, or as, as an investor, you know, you only get more out of it. I could play a video game. I spend $60 on the game and I never get anything out of it besides the fun of playing the game. Now I can get into the game, buy some cool stuff that's limited edition. I own it on the blockchain. There's an aftermarket. If I want to go sell it down the road, maybe some of it pops off and people want it, you sell it, you know, you can, you can profit from this. Like you can literally have income just coming in and I, I you know, I've done it. And uh, the, the other guys at Nifty Dimensions, we all experiment. Like you said, like, you're not going to pop off sitting there like, oh, maybe one day I'll buy crypto. Dude, 
you got $10 to spend or $100 or a grand and you know it ain't going to hurt you, give it a shot. Like not financial advice, you know, to anybody watching, but like, yeah, yeah like, like you said, you got to go for it. You got to, you got to try because. Well, I like the getting... casino analogy that, sure. that like, don't, don't go into it with something that you're not ready to lose. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like, because it is gambling. Right. Exactly. All, all investing is gambling. It's all it is. It's literally, and, and I know that. And like, I'm glad I've been putting it that way to the viewers because I don't ever want it to seem like I'm like shilling, you know, like, oh my God, go buy this, go buy that. If I talk yeah. about something, it's because I'm invested in it. And I think there might be a chance, you know, for it to have a future. I could be wrong on some stuff. I right. Could be right on the difference stuff. between gambling and, and, and this is that there's, there's research to be done. You Absolutely. know, if you just, it's not just throwing it into the next thing that you see, which may, hey, that might work, but it's mm -hmm. not sustainable in the grand scheme. You're really going to be wrong more than you're right, unless you're doing your research. For sure. And so I think at minimum, you know, turn, so, you know if you're, if you're looking into it, at least go to somebody like me who has a YouTube channel, look at, you know, YouTube search it, see what kind of videos there are on it for somebody to explain it, or just literally go do the homework for yourself. If you don't know how though, not saying you, but anybody in general, uh, yeah, then go find a YouTube video on it. Then you'll kind of get the gist of what's going on with it. Personally, if I want to look into a project, I'm going to go to their social media to see what the community is like. I'm going to go check out. I'm going to go to coingecko.com. I'm going to see if it's even up there. If it is up there, I want to know the total amount of tokens or coins that it has. I want to know the market cap. I want to know the volume in the last 24 hours and over time. And I, I want to know what I'm getting into. That's a crypto token, a crypto coin or an NFT project or a metaverse or anything in between. Um, even if I'm buying a song, Mike Shinoda from Lincoln Park has a new, uh, I wish I knew, remembered the name of it. I'll put it up here for you guys to see later. But uh, Mike Shinoda from Lincoln Park has a whole new NFT brand and it's music. And so here's a song and it's dissected like a mixing board. Here's the guitar track one, here's the other guitar track two. You can buy each track as an NFT and then whoever owns that track, you can mix that song on the website or whatever, and you make it that way instead of whatever. So if you own all yeah. the tracks, you can mix it your own way. That's yeah, I, just, been... I just love the creativity of, of this, the way it's going. That's me too. Crazy. Me too. Me too. Yeah. So I don't know, man. I don't know how these all work. I'm feeling pretty good. I don't know how fast or how slow to go here. I just know that okay. as far as topics uh, go, I don't, you know what I mean? I, I'm trying to move these along with the topics because we've gone through yeah. a lot already. Well, and I have I have questions for you too. Um, oh, good. So let's go into like some heavy stuff before we go back to the mezcal. Um, okay. Because the mezcal is going to mess up your palate. It's okay. so weird. Right, um, right. So this one, this is the Balcones. Um, well, here's the front label. Um, Balcones. Oh, wow. It's a single malt, and this is this is the one I showed you. This is my artwork yeah um, yeah yeah awesome it's so i went with like the old almond brothers like mushroom thing so yeah. um this one's called exploration um and in the art you can see that the words p-o-r-t are highlighted because um this is is finished in a port barrel so like a port wine mm -hmm. so um single malt is basically scotch that's not made in scotland and so i mean they can't call it scotch made in texas um oh. but it is basically it's basically a scotch it's a single malt um and uh so balconies is in waco texas they're some of my favorite people we've done a lot of picks with them so this one is cool. a, one of their single malts that's aged in a scotch i'm sorry a port cask and it's about um four years old it looks like it looks like okay. it's four years and one day old um so it's a lot younger than some of this other stuff um this one is so that the proof on this it's 124 so we're stepping up so oh, be shit. prepared i would definitely throw a cube in this one before you drink it i mean you can take that first sip if you want i just i don't know i think it's just going to burn your mouth that's fine um, so yeah like let it Ooh. let it get a little melt but this one's just full of flavor um so balconies is just a, a, a texas whiskey brand that's just doing a lot of cool stuff and we mm -hmm. like them because uh, they experiment a lot so they just try they put their stuff into so many different types of casks to age nice. it um and it just creates cool flavors all right mm. Mm. Oh. 
<laughs> I get a lot more like almost sulfur on this, like, Ooh. um, and you get that wine, little sweetness on the end. Yeah. But yeah, like I said, this one's strong. Like you definitely want to like, I maybe even add a little water to kind of hasten that, that melting process. All right. Um, you don't have to drink it this high proof. Just needs like a few drops. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a, uh, this is actually really good, <laughs> man. It's strong, but I, it's really, yeah. It I mean, look quality. at the color. You could like the color of it is crazy. Yeah. It's like super dark. Super th- yeah. Yeah. Now I might be a noob, but uh, I can appreciate good stuff. And this is, this is no joke. This is really nice. And it, and it's dark like this because in Texas um, it's hot, right? So like the heat on the wood in the summer um, and even like right now, it's, I think it's like 70 degrees outside right now. Um, so it, it never really gets cold. And so uh, the heat on the wood create, it just, it, the wood breathes when it's cold and hot. And so uh, when it expands in the heat, it, it's, uh, you know, the liquid goes to the wood more. And when okay. it comes back out, it comes out with a lot of wood influence. So it adds yeah. color, it adds flavor. Nice. So they, they can't good. age stuff for like 20 years here, like they can in Kentucky. Ah. Uh... I never knew that about the scotch thing either. That's pretty crazy. It's funny. There's probably like anybody who drinks that watches this is probably going to laugh at me for how much of a noob I am. But yeah. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that's like common knowledge. Most people don't know that. Okay. Yeah, that was good. I actually, I poured, I think I poured a little too little, but I was trying to be safe, but I, I yeah, poured a very tiny okay. amount. Yeah. I well, figured we still have two more, so that's okay. Right. Yeah. Cool. Well, all right. Well, you got questions. I'm curious. Uh, I'm curious what you'd want to go over. Yeah. Um, well, you, you hinted that like maybe if you drank, you'll have some tips for people. So I guess my question is um, what where should I be looking now? I mean, what 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 are the up and coming um, crypto that I should consider investing in? Hell yeah. Yes. Great. Um, all right. So two things that are important right now in crypto, in my opinion. Web3, anything attached to Web3, that's going to be like Anchor, A-N-K-R. That just popped off um, this weekend, this past weekend. Um, Anchor's connected to Web3 and it's cheap. It's so like, what's Web3? Web3. So right now we currently use web, World Wide Web number two. This is the second version of the web. Oh, okay. So Web3, you'll have a little button in the top right corner of, of a Web3 ready site and it'll say connect. That connect goes, you'll connect it to your MetaMask wallet or whatever crypto wallet you have hooked up to your, you know, to your... Um, whatever, Google Chrome or whatever add-on. So then my MetaMask is in my Google Chrome and then I hit connect, I sign it, you know, like I, um, and it, okay, now I'm in, it connects it. And now I can interact directly with my wallet to the site that's buying NFTs, that's buying crypto, that's selling NFTs or crypto. So Web3. So why do they have to do it on a different web platform? Um, man, I think just because the old, I mean, they still, they have web three stuff working right now. So I don't really know the exact answer, but I would assume to tighten up the ship and whatever, I hate to say this, but ever, whatever kind of regulations and new things they're going to yeah, yeah. add on. It sucks to say that, but we both know. Well, this it's kind of like bleeding edge stuff. So yeah, they just need to be in a place where it's less regulated. <laughs> right, right, right. The irony of crypto being decentralized and not supposed to have a middleman and I believe Web3 is going to be kind of like, uh, I don't know if it'll really allow that. I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens. But that's, yeah, that's one of the things. Um, Web3 is massive. So to look into like storage, S-T-O-R-J, that's one that's Web3. Um, Gitcoin, G-I-T, coin, um, these are all on Coinbase. So like those are easy ones to get attached to Web3. I also would get into anything connected to the metaverse is popping like crazy. You'll, you'll have watched something called Gala. I covered Gala about two weeks ago when it came out on Coinbase for sale originally. It was at eight or nine cents when I covered it on the video. It was worth like 70 something cents the other day um, over the weekend. Do you worry at all? Because I, I mean, I see, the, I see the potential on the metaverse stuff. Um, mm-hmm. But do you think that it's blowing up because it's cool? I like do that, that, that the cool fact, I mean, I know that could end up being a good thing. Yeah. But no, like, both. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's VR failed. Remember when we were kids in the echelon mall? Yeah. Had, yeah. Uh, what was that called? Um, and then it just disappeared. It was like a cool thing. 
Yeah, damn, I can't that was remember. in like the that was in like ninety three or something. And like yeah, that yeah. Was like stand on the platform VR with like the full headset and everything. Exactly. I can't remember what it was called, but it was the Echelon Mall in South Jersey, everybody. And uh, Exilorama. That's it, dude. Exilorama. Wow. Good shit. Um, so Exilorama had the first VR and it was so bad, right? Like you paid like $30 <laughs> to like move as like a cube, cube kind yeah. of thing. Or it was so bad. So it, it looked like it looks like super hot does now, which I love. But uh, yeah, like blocky. Yeah, it was very blocky. So you would so now VR failed a couple of times. So 3D NFTs are huge for VR and AR and gaming because it's a, it now incorporates these things together. And so now it's not just not just VR, but it's investment in the new gaming system. And you know, VR is is where gaming is heading and AR. I'm not saying it's the only way, but like look into like VR chat is a free a free <laughs> VR website. Or but it is, is the is the right amount of money going into it? Because I've said for years, I've had PlayStation VR, um, mm -hmm. which I know is not necessarily technically the best, but has yeah. like a lot of good games. Mm -hmm. And I have so much fun with it. And I, when people come over, I'm like, you got to try this. Yeah. And the fact that they're like, I've never done this. And I'm like, this has been out for like five or six years. Wow. And uh, I think it's amazing. And some of the games, like the, just the demos of it, I'm like, why don't they make this into like a real game? Like this would be sick. Yeah. And like, I feel like the gaming companies haven't invested in it well enough. And maybe they have, and maybe there's like some roadblock that's happening because what, dude, what, like you said, like this was in the nineties and, and the technology is way better. Why yeah. don't, and like, like when you see ready player one, like they already have like haptic suits and stuff, like the beginning of them where you can feel like things and like, right. why is this not like a full suit already? Like we have all the technology yeah. is there like we have the technology to do the like touch and feeling and all that stuff right on a basic level and we have the technology to put you on like a treadmill or something or a right. wheel or i don't know um Dude, why you're why, right why, why hasn't a major company done it like it's insane i think we all agree that it's going to go there mm -hmm. um and again not to like go down the rabbit hole philosophically but like the whole thing like are we in a um are we already in a um what what's what's the word uh a simulation right um, right oh yeah like yeah. i mean now. and the idea of that is the reason i brought that up is like look at like 1980 whatever like or 70 whatever when pong came out and then yeah in, in in a few decades where it's come so then you have to take that to the end point which is well, where do we think it's going to be in 20 years right and even in 20 years it's going to be at a point where right now like scientifically we couldn't even uh, imagine right, like right. there's gonna there's gonna be a technology where we'd be like what how do they do that Totally. Imagine a hundred, a hundred years, like go back a hundred years to, right. you know, to 1921, those people would be mind blown about oh my the stuff God. that we have. And, and because like the technology is going up so fast, like from 2021 to 2121, it's going to be even crazier. So like, we have to agree, I would say, if we don't kill each other, that we're going to have like, a full-on virtual world that's almost indistinguishable from real life totally in 100 or what about yeah. 300 like right uh, so so anyway my point is wh what the fuck why, why hasn't this happened like when that's we have all question. this technology and money yeah <laughs> well i'll tell you what i'll call out one of the you know the uh, last interview i did was android jones and i know he subscribes to the channel and watches uh some of it at least so android if you're watching uh let us know because android is uh, one of the main creators of Microdose VR, which is a really amazing uh, VR site. And he's in with all the VR world, all the devs and everything. So that's a good question. Uh, I'll, I'll just put it out there on the show. Anybody else has any uh, thoughts or ideas on it? Leave a comment below because that's a great question. I'll say this though, because I never invest anything I can't afford to lose. If I see Mark Zuckerberg, go all in and say, Facebook's not called Facebook anymore. Yeah. It's called Meta. Yeah. Guess what? I'm going in, bro. Like that's yeah. the simplest answer I could possibly give you. If that happens, I move with the well, trends. Well, that's what we need. I, I mean, it's, it's again, you know, like the analogy to uh, Ready Player One, which I keep going back to, but like the big company, right? Becomes like the evil empire. Yep. Um, but, but it's kind of necessary for progress. Absolutely. Like you need, you need that, uh, you need an amount of money that's insane to th be thrown into stuff, technology like this, because totally. it almost makes me think that it's being like blocked. 
Like, why mm. are we not there? Because, right. It's like this, this VR stuff and Oculus, it's been out for years. Yeah. And the fact that everyone doesn't own one to me is a tragedy because for like, sure. it's awesome technology and it's not all that expensive. And like, but it's the not. games suck. They like do. the games kind of suck. Like, yeah. Why? Like it's, it's, it's for PlayStation. Most of the good games are just old games that they just made into like VR, which is right. like cool. But, but like, I should be completely mind blown every time I put that headset on because the graphics are, can, you know, I don't think it's to the point where it can look as real as it can. in some of the games that are out now where Agreed. you're in it, yep. like, but, but we can't be far from that. Yep. Yeah. Um, my friend Freeman has said some very similar things. He's, he's been thinking they're holding back the tech too. Um, so yeah, maybe that's what's going on. I don't know. Maybe they're well, just... we do know, I mean, planned obsolescence is a thing, you know, mm -hmm. like when Nintendo came out, that was revolutionary. Right. And, and I don't think that they were necessarily holding back, but then to do like from 32 to 64 or 64 to 128, like, right. Hey, no one was like, here's my idea. 512. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Like, <laughs> um, it's, they, they make money. Like if when you have the technology, it, it's dumb to just do the best thing that you can when you could bleed people for, for the next decade. That's true. Um, and that definitely slows things down. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's probably got a huge part to do with it. Um, I don't have, like I've, I've tried VR a bunch of times, but I I'm looking to get like a decent set. I, I know one big complaint that I've heard a lot, dude, is, um, there's still limitations. Like you said, it's not as good as it could be. The limitations of what people are getting out of it. I think they finally just now made one that's pretty accurate where you can walk around, like you can fully move and like everything's finally working. But I think you've been pretty limited. Like you said, it, it was, it just wasn't popping off. It was just like, eh, this is well, all you're right. Standing, you're standing in a, in a space in your living room, um, yeah. which is limited. And, and I've seen like... <laughs> I, when I had people over, I have to tell them like, people want to like video people playing it because it's funny. And I, I want to be like, don't get too close. Cause yeah. like I've watched my, my brother like swing and punch someone in the face. Oh shit. Like, or like he like punched a <laughs> lamp and like broke my lamp. No way. <laughs> like swinging like a knife or something, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. So, I mean, so there's that limitation that, yeah. I mean the, the movement part and then also the feeling part, like they have suits that do some of the stuff. I just don't, it's just probably that it hasn't come together. And if it has, that it's still such a fringe thing that yeah. like some rich person can afford. Um, right. Like it's got a, it's just, it's, a, it's such a cool technology, even with the crappy games. Like, like I mentioned, super hot. It's purposefully crappy graphics. It's all polygons, hmm. but it's one of my, it's one of the best games. I mean, that's a game where I, I, I like dive on the floor and I'm like crawl, I'm like, you know, in the fetal position to try to dodge bullets and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, uh, it's crazy. Um, and, you know, I have people over and I put them in the shark tank where it just, all it is is you're in a cage and it just drops down into the ocean and sharks start coming at you and stuff. No and it way. feels like you're really there. It's, uh, it's crazy. And that's, that's, that, that's just such a simple concept of a game that they created on the demo disc. So anyway, yeah, like that stuff needs to come around because if, if you're talking about a real multiverse that people really want to spend their time in um it needs to be better no better doubt. than it is absolutely well hopefully it goes that way i can tell you what i finally me and the team here we get to help create whatever it is in the future we're friends with some big gaming developers uh like i said some people in the vr world and all so hopefully now like all right so we just entered the metaverse right so like we get to develop it so it's it's the only it's the limitations of of the the creators so maybe now that they've opened up the door it's like okay this wasn't working for us so we're gonna like bring you guys in to like own some of this with us well it's so important to have people who are not in necessarily like their whole life is the video game industry and they're just doing it for that reason like you yeah. need some creative people to come into stuff like this and do something awesome with it I mean, Absolutely. back to Facebook, like it started out as a completely different thing to like catalog people in, in, in a college. Right, um, right. And then it turned into something else because like there were pieces of that that became something that needed to be part of our life. And yeah. that's what with this, like maybe you create something that is an amazing idea. Like maybe your little multiverse doesn't work, but there are pieces of it that someone is like, yo, this is it. This, we, this is what this is the feature that we need to have. Right. And that's how it's going to get created is like people, smart people, creative people doing, putting the time into this 
yeah. and someone's going to hit it right or everyone's going to kind of contribute. For sure. And then that's when the tech companies come in and buy it. But I mean, you know, I, again, that's kind of needed yeah, in yeah. most cases. But then again, you know, like Twitter, Facebook, they, these are just dudes on their own that turn into these corporations. And even, yeah. I mean, even Microsoft, like Bill Gates was in a garage. Right. Yeah. It all started somewhere. Yeah. Things have moved so quickly from the time we were kids to now that, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a bit ridiculous to really think about it. Uh, we're, we're now up to Windows 11. You know, we're about to all get Windows 11. Like, we're already that far. It's, that's crazy to me, man. That's, that's really insane. But, yeah, so that I would say Metaverse and Web3, just to go back. Um, now Sorry, I keep saying multiverse, not metaverse. Oh, it's okay. It's pretty much the same thing, so all good. But um, so, I'll, so, like, tips as far as how I go about from Coinbase all the way to the most extreme, like buying things so early that like there's only a few hundred holders or whatever. Um, here's the levels. So I started with Coinbase, then I went to Binance. Binance um, has some stuff to offer. I like it, but eh, like I, I don't really see the big deal. So then I went to something called Gate.io. Gate.io is more like a spot trading site where like you buy it, but like, they're just like holding it for you. Like, it's not like you have it in your own wallet and all like, uh, not that you're really ever really holding your crypto, but you know, like it's not on the blockchain under like your name under a site like this, but this is great. Like I've been finally learning. Um, I've been finally daring enough to try like a little trading here and there. Like if say a new coin pops off, uh, mm -hmm. gate.io will let you know. They'll have a countdown. It pops off in two days and four hours or whatever. So I pay attention to that. Sometimes I'll cover them on the show, let, give people a heads up. So then you try to jump in on it. If something just drops and you get it at a penny or maybe fractions of a penny and you watch it go up. Now, unfortunately, this is trading, so this isn't holding. Um, so P shit goes way up. Okay, I just got this for a penny. Now it's at 42 cents and I got like a bunch of them you sell it, you know what I mean? Maybe you make a grand or whatever, depending on what you put into it. But like, that's another way to, to get in that I've been doing. Um, but that's not holding for stuff. And, you know, like I buy the low cap stuff on there to save money on gas, which is the next phase, which is buying on a swap site or a DEX site, decentralized exchange DEX. Um, and buying on a DEX site like Uniswap, that will cost you gas money, but that's like, all right, it takes money to make money. Yeah, you're going to spend 100 bucks in gas today, or maybe you, you get a deal, you get a break, and it was only 50 bucks. Or in July, you could spend $5 on gas. Right now, it'd be $200 for a gas fee, just based on what I'm seeing here. So, all right, but if I'm investing a grand, okay, or you know, whatever, um, all right, then maybe spending a couple hundred dollars on gas is okay. But if you're spending, if you're buying $100 worth of crypto, and gas is two hundred dollars that day, or at you know, like you're not going to do it. That'd be stupid. So, like, tell me what gas is because I'm not understanding that. So, gas is the charge to do any business on the Ethereum blockchain. Anything. So, there are crypto coins, and a coin is its own network. Like, even Doge is a network. It has its own blockchain system. And there are tokens which ride on the, the coins that have their own system. Ethereum is a crypto coin. It's a blockchain network within itself. A token like Shiba Inu is a ERC-20, which is an Ethereum token that rides on the Ethereum network. All right, so that's that's the difference um, that makes any sense. Um, it took me a while to even realize that there was a difference, to be honest with you. So if you watch some of the older videos, I don't know the difference, you know what I mean? Um, but that's pretty much what it is. So obviously, if you're investing in a coin that has a whole system, you're probably investing in something with a lot more utility than something that's like, oh, they do funny memes, like, which not right. saying it will fail, but come on, like we both know. Um, so for me, I play, I play it from the most basic stuff you can get on Coinbase that just has good utility, especially if it's Web3 or Metaverse, because that's what's popping now. So I go to coingecko.com. This is my little heads up, little hack. I'll go to coingecko.com. And if you go to coins and then categories, click on the category section, they'll categorize meme coins, metaverse, uh, web three. You know what I mean? You can go through and go through and see. And then, all right, what's popping? What's the top shit? 
okay, this is great, but that's five G's. I don't want to spend five G's. This one's fractions of a penny and it's on the come up. Okay, now I could get millions of these or thousands or whatever. And then if that pops off, all right, now that's a big, you know, that's the big pop off right there. Um, that's that's pretty much all there is to it. So like CLE, I bought something called CLE Kai when it was brand new because it's a play to earn game. So you literally, it's a game. It's uh, for your cell phone, you earn crypto. So I figured, you know, let me, let me give it a shot. I got in on that one early. Um, has it popped off yet? It did. It's come down a good bit. So that initial, I could have made, I could have done pretty well with it. I won't lie because I got in so early on it, but I held off um, to see, I think there's still more of a future. Those are the mistakes you can make with some of those coins. Did I make a mistake? I don't know. I guess we'll have to see as mm -hmm. things go, go through, but those are some of the things that can happen with the low caps. But um, I pretty much any, I buy, I'm like, all right, I'm going to hold on to these for a couple of years and watch them and see where they develop to. If any of them pop off, why would I sell one? If I only spent a little bit of money and it's forgotten money, I'm not going to sell one like, oh, I can make $500 right now. No, nah, like, even like five G's. All right. Well, that's a different strategy, right? Like, I mean, like trading where you're just sure. trying to make a dollar everywhere you can. Whereas you're, you're looking for something that's going to be a longer term for sure. Like payoff. Yeah. Most so of the time. Yeah. So, and then there's a medium where on gate.io or, or a, a spot trading site like that, that's where you can kind of find a happy medium where like you can buy them and hold them on there, but you can also, trade them and flip them fast like say something goes up and i've been trying it it's been kind of fun like all right let me see if i can make a quick hundred bucks and then i would just try it okay cool that worked let me you know and then try to accumulate um and then the other little tip i would say that uh most of my viewers know this but not everybody thinks about this so say you do have a coin or a token that really is taken off it's like oh man it's up ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars and i want to pull out 10 g's um pull it out as tether if you can turn it into tether or any other stable coin that doesn't fluctuate with the market so if i made that 10 g's and i don't want it to fluctuate i'll put it into a stable coin like tether and then whatever i leave in there i just leave in there instead of turning it maybe some people put it back into ether or whatever um and with some of these, you have to. But the point is, don't let it sit as ether if you're gonna, because the market's volatile. If you want it to just be that 10 G's, turn it into a stable coin like Tether. Now you got the 10 G's and you can just sit. And then when you're ready to reinvest it or cash out or whatever you want to do, it's a very easy way to do it. Because um, hmm. everybody's always wanting to know the exit strategy. So I'm starting to talk about that more for everybody because there is yeah. an exit strategy. Some people think like, oh, you can't really cash out of crypto. Like, dude. I know people that have bought giant houses with cashing out from crypto. I know people that saved their asses and got to pay their, you know, because they held crypto from the past, they cashed in and, you know, saved their house from like foreclosure. I've seen everything in between. So I know it has real life value, um, but there's definitely like this little, you know, there's a couple like little birdies out there talking in people's ears saying like, it's not real. Right. It's, it's just a scam. It's not a scam. It's just, you can be scammed. Um, there's a huge difference. There are a million scams going on in crypto, like everything else on the internet, but it itself is not a scam. There's just a lot of cold blooded people within it that will take you for your ass if you're not paying attention, you know, or if you try to, oh, I'm going to put 10 G's in this. I don't know what it is. Who cares? You're going to lose your ass to that every time because they wait for people like that. You know, they, they yeah. want you. Yeah. Hope that answers your question. I know I went a little yeah. deep into it, but yeah. No, no, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely like, it's not something that you should just jump into, you know, like there's definitely research required on all this stuff. Absolutely, for sure. Uh, I mean, it's fun to follow trends and everything, but like following a trend means that it has to happen first, which means you're probably a little bit behind. Yeah, there's one. In some uh, cases. For sure. Like crypto.com has, um, and I agree with that. Uh, crypto.com has one called Elon right now. I think the only reason it got listed was because it's called Elon. And like, we both know how this is all going. So that's one like, okay, I looked it up and eh, it's usage. I don't really know. I can't really tell to be honest with you, but it's called Elon. So like, just like Shiba, like, all right, I'll throw 40 bucks in it. You know, um, when I got Shiba, it was like, I spent like 40, 45 bucks in it. 
it's worth thousands now just for that little bit. So Elon's mm -hmm. the same thing. It's that like Sheba prices when I, you know, so I'm thinking like, okay, if I got, when I, with Sheba, I got like whatever, um, 20, 30 million or whatever, like in the beginning. Um, so I'm like, all right, what if I get like 40 or 50 million of this Elon, you know, will it, you know, will it do the same thing? Mm -hmm. So there are times where like, if it doesn't cost much to just give it a shot and see like, all right, the homework didn't pay off. I have no idea what, what it's going to be worth, but like a little gamble. All right, I'll put 40 mm -hmm. bucks on it or 50 bucks on it. Uh, Sheba worked. It didn't really have much of a value or a usage either when I, you know, it was just trendy. So somewhere in between, like, I'm not saying like, go blow your money on stuff that doesn't have utility. I would just say sometimes if you're, if you have a feeling about it, or if it makes it onto a main website, like crypto.com, they're not going to just put it up there for no reason. They're not going to let it just like yeah. fall apart, you know? <clears throat> well, utility is the stuff that's going to have the long play. I mean, it's the sure. stuff like these meme coins and stuff. It's like fun way to make money quickly if you get on the trend at the right time. Right. But it's not, where's it going? I mean, the chances of one of those actually turning into a business is not is very low. Very low. And I I've mean, been handed my ass many times. I've been rug pulled yeah. on a, at least four or five of them. Full disclosure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like I said, uh, if, you want to? Oh, we're going go for ahead. the next one. Yeah, okay. so this is the one that I blocked out that I blurred or that I put like the pizza cat over. Uh, oh, yeah. So, so you couldn't see what it was. Um, so this, here's the bottle. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's probably too small to read, uh -huh. but it says, and on the crest there, it says product of New Jersey. No way. Oh, I didn't see that. That's um, cool. The brand is Francis James. Uh -huh. uh, it's produced uh, in Collingswood, New Jersey. Shut up. It's a... Uh, Francis really? James, I think, I think is the name of, I think it's the father of Jimmy and Mike Marino. Uh, this is Mike. No Marino's brand. way. What? Yeah, this is, it's Mike's brand. Um, oh. So I worked with him on the label. So, so I created the label for him. Um, and this is uh, last time I was in Jersey. Uh, we went to uh, Bistro Di Marino. Yeah. And, um, he, uh, he gave me this, this is a, um, Cool. he bottles this at 92 proof but this is a uh, cast strength and i don't remember what it is because it's not labeled as such the, the label yeah. is for the regular product but i think it's right. it's probably like between 110 and 120 so this is another strong one um so um yeah right now he's uh this is uh, it's called sourcing um so he's not actually uh distilling whiskey right now um a lot of uh startup whiskey companies brands they start by buying stuff from somewhere else. So this is from a company called MGP out of mm -hmm. Indiana, and they produce a lot of whiskey. Like they produce so much whiskey that a lot of the stuff that you see on the shelves is actually their product. And okay. they just sell the barrels and then people put it into their own, you know, own bottle. But at least in this case, um, Mike, um, aged, he, he took the whiskey and he put it into uh, wine barrels. Um, okay. I'm probably going to butcher the pronunciation, but it's Alicante. Okay. I don't know. And Moscato wine barrels. So, um, yeah, so this was aged into, in two different types of wine barrels and, um, yeah. And then bottled. So, so cool. Yo, yeah. Shout out, shout out to Mike Marino and Jimmy and the entire Marino family. I love you guys. It's been a long time since I've seen you. So cheers. Salute. Yeah. So I was excited to get this. Um, Mike wasn't there. Like we went out to dinner. I forget what it was for. Um, yeah. and, uh, it was, I think it was maybe it was my birthday or I'm not sure. But yeah, and one of his his managers dropped this off. It's excited. Mm. So this is uh, this is bourbon, okay. which is funny because you know for being in the bourbon society and helping with that, this is the only bourbon that, that I sent you. Everything oh, else wow. is like random other whiskeys. Um, yeah. But yeah, so this is bourbon. Awesome. I love this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you can taste the wine finish on it. Oh yeah. So he's got a bunch of different products. Um, this is, um, he calls this the family cast reserve. So it's like a special, again, a special finishing on this one with the wine. Mm. Um, and uh, he and I were talking, I was like, man, there's just nobody that I'm aware of making whiskey in South Jersey. Um, right. And I love the aspect of, the, the family businesses become like, you know, Italian food and stuff. 
and and to make it like Italian wine, aging it in Italian wine makes it like something that I think people from South Jersey are going to be interested in. So um, great. This was the best surprise yeah. ever. I'm so glad you didn't yeah. tell me ahead of time. <laughs> Good. That was great. Like, holy yeah. shit. Good shit. Yeah. So I reached out to Mike and, and maybe he'll hook you up with a bottle um, because I think he's selling them now. Uh, or I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I think he's a distributor actually. That's, that's where we were at. Um, I was oh. helping him because of uh, with the pandemic, there's been a glass shortage. Yeah. Um, so he can't get, he couldn't get the type of bottle, but I think he wanted more of this style bottle, like a okay. tall bottle. Yeah. Um, but he had to get these squat bottles. So we had to update the label. So um, yeah, the way it works for him now, like where he's at is he's talking to a distributor, which is he has to sell the product basically. And, th- and they have to be like, yeah, I want to carry that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the distributor is the one that sells it to the stores. So it's like a tiered system where then like, you know, your local total wine or whatever will say, yeah, we want to carry this. And then it ends up on the shelf. Oh yeah. So that's where, that's where he's at in the process right now. That's so awesome. I can't wait. Yeah. I'm calling that motherfucker. As soon as we're done this, I'm calling him, or at least <laughs> I'm going to text him and tell him to call me. Um, hell yeah. That's awesome. That was great too. Um, I like taking it slow. I've been I've just these tiny little amounts, but I got to tell you, I feel so nice right now. I don't feel drunk at all. I feel very just chill, like a really good mood. Well, you know, like I, I think we used to talk about this, that like drinking mad dog 2020, like, that's going to be a different type of drunk than yeah. wine, than beer, you know, yeah. good quality whiskey is going to give you a different feeling too. And I always think it's a happy to me, a more like mellow, happy yeah. buzz. Right. And drinking like high proof stuff gets you there pretty fast. It yeah, happens. Yeah. Like when I do these tastings and like, if I'm, you know, writing up a review or something, I have samples. Uh, yeah. It creeps up on you. Like, especially when I'm trying to get tasting notes and I'm like, okay, sip, like sip sip and before you know it you're like through a couple ounces and a couple ounces of high proof whiskey is enough yeah. to have a buzz like right. to start you off when you're yeah. talking about 120 proof <laughs> hell yeah i bet yeah i'm i feel really nicely um but it's different it's very like it's i'm not all over the place i don't feel like i'm a mess like i i drank on the show on a couple live streams and they don't they don't exist anymore but like i was a total mess like um i was I don't even wasn't even drunk. I was just like slow. Like I don't feel slow from this. I guess, uh, but that's. Well, so I always awesome. think that in, the initial buzz always feels stronger than you think it is. Yeah. Until you realize that you weren't really like you're. You're just your brain is kind of catching up. Yeah. But yeah, you're not. You're not going to even get a real buzz off of all this. I think. I mean, you might be feeling it right now, but in like twenty minutes, you'll be fine. <laughs> right. Well, I tried to prepare yeah. it correctly. I I stayed on an empty stomach for this, so I could like you know really appreciate whatever it was. I wanted to make sure to feel it like for what it was. Um, I fast during the daytime anyway, so I don't eat food like until like- Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, you know I mean? I'm trying to do that again. I'm trying to get back on the wagon of uh, fasting because the days that I do it by accident, I feel great. Hell yeah. It makes me feel like, I feel like my brain gives me a little like serotonin like injection. Like yeah. I'm just sitting there and I feel good. Like I almost feel like I do if I took a painkiller right. or like I just get that like moment of like pleasure just yeah, from yeah. nothing which totally. is, and I get that mostly from fasting. I, I'm glad you said that. I'm a big fan. I even like, um, early this morning, I did my workout fasted. That's the best shit. Like, um, so then whatever you got left in you, your body's burning it. It's using it as like fuel to build, you know, and to build muscle. Um, I'm infatuated with it. Like, I don't know if you ever saw me, at, at, you know, at a chubbier level, but I'm, I was 50 something pounds, almost 60 pounds heavier than you see wow. me right here. And like, which is a lot, it was a lot for me, you know, I'm a little dude, man. So like, yeah, yeah, that was a lot for me. And I didn't know I was getting chubby until somebody told me like, you know, me, like I'll pop the jokes. You know what I mean? Like I could take a good joke against myself, but I could also throw them out there. And I had made a joke to somebody I was hanging out with. I was like, yeah, you're getting kind of chubby there, bro. And he's like, man, he's like, you're a short, you know, little whatever. Like, what do you, (laughs) and he, and he, was like you're fat man like what are you talking about i'm like i'm not fat and uh i stepped on the scale and then i hadn't stepped on a scale in years and i stepped on a scale and i was i was literally uh about 60 pounds heavier so i fasting how much you weigh it was uh i weighed this is so embarrassing to say for my for my i'm 125 right now i was which is what i would have guessed right right um, I'm one, I was almost 190. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I was almost 190. I was like one. Yeah, that's a something. lot because so I'm, I'm six feet tall. And when I, 
my highest was like just under two. Yeah. Um, and uh, man, so, I felt like I felt horrible. Right. And I've hit, I've hit 190 a couple of times and it's enough that there's a little bit of pudge happening. Right. Right. And like for me, like when I know it's time is the pants, like when I have to go to work oh, yeah. where I'm just like, and then all day you sit there and feel fat and, yep, <laughs> like, yep. and you just feel shitty, man. Like I hate gaining weight. Like the fasting stuff has been great. Um, yeah. when I, when I've done it and it's like, you just, once you get past that initial hunger, it, it starts to like, you just forget for me, it's more of a mental thing. It's when you think about it, it's hard to not eat when you just go on with your day. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah. I, I dig it too. It's i worked through it myself. Um, you know, yeah, good little a fasted workout. And then when I'm working, I always do my episodes in the morning. Anyway, all every, all the nifty dimension stuff is done in the daytime. Cause I turn to shit at night. So, uh, yeah, that was, that was, um, yeah, just something, something. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Um, like, I feel like the body will tell you when it really needs something. Like you mentioned, like working out without food and stuff, which mm-hmm. can be bad, but it can not, you know, as long, it's, I always feel like just listen to your body. Like when I've fasted, there've been days where I felt like I didn't need to eat at all. Like yeah. I almost, it's like nighttime and I'm like, I haven't eaten. And when my body wants something, I get hungry. And that's when it's like, all right, I have to, or like, I feel like I'm going to like pass out or something. That's when yeah. I'm like, okay, it's, it's this time, it's time to stop messing around. Like my body needs something right, right now. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll like, be don't honest. starve yourself. If you're listening, don't starve yourself, but like, see what it's like to, to skip a meal. At least yeah. to start. I've been trying to get my pops to do it, man, because he's put on some pounds and I was like, just don't put cream in your coffee in the morning, <laughs> just black coffee. And then just don't eat until lunchtime, 12, one, two, something like that. And then don't eat past like 7 PM, you know, like yeah. little tiny rules. They call it the 16, eight rules, 16 hours, you know, off and eight hours mm-hmm. on. And then you can, then you start to get good at it. And then you're like, all right, I could do one meal a day. It's real and, easy. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. And then if I feel like eating or pigging out, guess what? I don't care because all the other days, I'm so strict and disciplined that when it's time to pig out and go crazy, I can do it whenever I want. Yeah. It doesn't, you know, food, food is like a drug that you can get off of in like a week or two. Like totally. once it, at first it's really hard and then it gets easy and it just, yeah. all the cravings go away. Yeah. Especially and, and my problem is food. that they come back. Like it's that I'll, I'll like get hungry or I'll have a moment where I'm just like, I need to eat something. That's like my pleasure. Yeah. And then I'll get like ice cream or something like Ben and Jerry's. Yeah. And that's, that's when I know it's over. Like when I get that, <laughs> like that, I've, I've fallen off the wagon because I'm yeah. eating the whole thing and it's yeah. going to be yeah. like 1200 calories. <laughs> Bro, I feel the exact, I'm the same exact way. And I'm a, a baked good addict. I donuts, cakes, uh, whatever, especially anything chocolate or, oh man, like that's the same with me. Like do, if I get it, like if I get a box of like donuts, the problem isn't the donuts. It's just like you. I'm going to eat all of them. And I won't, yeah, no. and, you know what I mean? I always say that. Like when I'm at the store and I'm hungry and I'm like, I'm just going to grab a couple snacks. Yeah. Like the other night I bought randomly a box of Triscuits and oh, Ritz okay. crackers. Yeah. I just wanted like salty. And yeah. um, as soon as I bought them in my mind, I was like talking to myself and like, bro, don't buy those. Yeah. I'm going to sit down. You're going to eat the whole box. Yeah. <laughs> and then I look at the calories for the whole box and I'm like, that's what's going to happen. So if you buy this, you know, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you're not no getting control. 120 calories. It says on the box, no. you're getting all of them. Right. You're not eating seven crackers. Right. Like seven Triscuits. Uh, yeah. But uh, that that's a, th- this baked goods thing is a good segue into this last bottle. Oh, cool. Um, and so, so this is the mezcal. Um, so this is what's interesting about it and why I sent it to you. Mm-hmm. So it says, so this is another one that you sh- you can find. Um, I think Total Wine carries this this brand. The brand is called uh, Jacaro. Um, so, and mezcal's all made in Oaxaca and um, Mexico. Cool. And um, this it's so this one's called Pachuga Mole. Um, so what Pachuga is is chicken, and mole is you know like a preparation of it's a, a Mexican preparation. I don't know if you have you had mole chicken before. Nope. Um, nope. Nope. So check it out like at a next time you have mexican food i don't know if you like mexican food but um, i love it mole Absolutely. is it's it's a chocolate based sauce um okay. it's chocolate and spices and Whoa. uh so it's it's like it's like a brown yeah i know you smelled it i did um so they they literally get chicken raw chicken put the mole spices on it and they throw it into the still what? with the mezcal 
and then they, they distill it again after that. Cause obviously you don't want to get raw chicken, you know? Um, so all the bad stuff is distilled out of it. But um, This is why I want to do this one last. Yeah. Like yeah. This, this, is this is insane. Just, Everybody um, watching anybody, anybody <laughs> who made it this far into the interview, first of all, shout out to you and cheers, but this smells insane. Anybody, if, if you ever checked any of this out, leave a comment below everybody. Like I know yeah. this is different than the normal crypto show, but like we're, we're digging deep here. So, wow. Try to get it close enough so people can see it. This is the brand. Like I said, I think yeah. Total Wine carries it. And that's a pretty big, I mean, they're in a lot of different states. Yeah, I um, could smell the chicken. I just want to say, yeah, yeah there's yeah. chicken in there. <laughs> All, right. All right, taste it. Hold on, hold on. So yeah, it's got a lot of baking spices and like it's it's very savory. Oh, shit. For like a drink like this. For okay. Agave spirit. All right, let me, wow. That this, is... this is 92, 92 proof. I have never smelled alcohol that smelled like this before. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> wow. That's wild, right? I could taste the chicken, dude. Yeah. Maybe man, maybe because you like, said it. It's like eating a dish. It's literally, yeah, it's like Violet Beauregard steals the piece of gum from Willy Wonka and starts chewing yeah. that shit. That's yeah. what it's totally like. Yeah, like, uh, I, you know, the fucking snozberries taste like snozberries. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. wow. And it's it's almost like having like chicken mole on a barbecue because the smokiness from the mezcal comes through. And so I mean, much. you get all that. What I love about mezcal is, is it always, it tastes like the ground that it came from. Mm -hmm. Like you can taste the earth and like the, plants and like i always say it's like a, a garden now this one is, is definitely has that chicken element to it but yeah. if you like this you might want to try another mezcal or maybe next time i'll send you samples we can run through all the agave stuff because yeah mezcal is awesome it's just like it's the earth man it's like it, it smells and tastes like the earth hmm. wow yeah crazy stuff right mm-hmm so yeah, mm. the brand is uh, Jicaru, X I C A R U, and they have awesome. a bunch of other stuff that's good too. Um, cool. So I could actually go chew them all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And it's uh, it's like a thirty dollar bottle. Wow. All right, that's not bad at all. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. But I got to tell you, the biggest surprise, obviously the big the big moment was uh, Mike Marino's own brand. I'm so excited, Mike. If yeah, you ever Francis see this, James is the brand awesome yo shout out to you mike i love you guys i love you and your whole family dude like very cool man i miss all you guys too in collingswood um yeah so everybody me and todd you know we grew up in collingswood new jersey that's where we went to school that's where we became friends and yeah um some of our closest friends we went to school with jimmy marino and his younger brother mike who's a, a great dude i've been friends with both of them for a long time this is his brand i just got surprised with it very cool just to catch everybody up on what we're talking about but yeah awesome so francis james right that's what you said yep awesome yep. yeah cool cool i'll hit him up over that man so all right i gotta ask you todd because you know i know we got to know a lot of different things but just to ask because i i need to ask everybody on the show um to go over it, what's your favorite toy or collectible from when you were a kid or all the way through like anything that really um has stayed with you you know what i mean where you really like for me it was garbage pail kids and like transformers what do you like um you said garbage spell kids? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no way. Oh, I'm so jealous. Oh, my God. Oh, I got the uh, Todd. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, total Todd and uh, Jenny Genius there. But but also, Look, I have you see my Nintendo Power? Of course that's I the, see uh, it. First, first one? Yeah, that's the very yeah. first Nintendo Power, everybody. Um, literally um yeah i mean i like i like the old nintendo stuff you see here's my yeah. mario um uh -huh. and then i have my comics and stuff i have a lot of stuff up on these walls but uh nice. so I, I don't know i mean i'm into all that stuff yeah that's great i don't know if i have a favorite but um yeah all that stuff's like nostalgic and so in this bar i have stuff up everywhere that's awesome you don't have to have a favorite i just ask everybody it wouldn't have been the show without me asking you for sure oh but, that's uh, like a regular question yeah, I ask everybody. I like to know, uh, did you, you know, like for me, like Voltron was my big FOMO thing. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, I missed out on Voltron. I never got to have one. So like, I always wanted to have one of them. Um, 
Garbage Pail Kids, I had an entire booklet of all of them. Mint. Yeah, me too. I mean, we'd be, I mean, you don't even want to get into it, but like, it's, they're so valuable now. Like all those, I know. you know, and, and we had, we, I'm sure we both had like probably almost a complete set of the first edition. I literally um, did. I did. I don't even know what I did with them. I think they probably got thrown away at some point. I yeah, found yeah. them years later, like probably in like the early 2000s. And I was like, oh man. And then I don't know where they are though. They were like in a box. Uh man all my stuff is gone all my michael jordan i had michael jordan rookie cards you I, See, I, I still have that stuff i i have um there's a card i remember i think i bought it with you um the shack rookie card one of the oh. card shops um, <laughs> when we were younger and yeah I got the, it was Shaq, Shaq rookie yeah i remember at the time i think i paid 18 dollars for it wow i don't even know what it's worth but i mean i think a lot of that stuff unfortunately for us that generation of cards is not worth much because it was mass produced still so not. it's more nostalgic that i have it and yeah. i do have all those cards that have all those cards that i bought back then that's awesome i don't, I don't have anything that make me rich though unfortunately yeah 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 no i mean uh my car all my cards are gone i had a lot of stuff that would have made me rich uh yeah if we if either of us had our garbage pail kids we'd be millionaires like literally it's crazy what some of them are i think i traded you and you can correct me if i'm wrong because because you were a big mj fan i think i traded you my mj white Sox rookie tops card for a ken griffey jr rookie card absolutely yep that was that was us yep that was us (laughs) absolutely i wonder who made out better there um you because you probably still have yours and i don't have it i do have it yeah i do have that i still have that griffey yeah yo just because you brought him up, Michael Jordan still to me is like the be all end all of like, you know, sports heroes. There will never be anybody. And it's not just because of the way he played. The mentality of Michael Jordan is when I have my heads on, when I have my head on straight, I try to use the mentality. I go about everything in that approach. Like I'm competitive, even at times when I shouldn't be all that stuff that i i chalk all that up to like mj man like that that was a certain mentality and he wasn't the only one but we both know i was obsessed with michael jordan i'm still pretty obsessed with michael jordan yeah i I, yeah i I remember man and now that's a good thing to pick up on too i mean i I, i've gotten like more into kobe lately and i hated him for a long time um but you know when he died that hurt um definitely there's a book that i want to send you um to read and it's an easy one um and the name is escaping me oh uh, i got it it's called jonathan livingston siegel okay um or you can buy it on your own i mean it's it's like it's like a maybe 100 pages something Mm -hmm. like that um and i came upon it because it was something that michael jackson gave to kobe as a gift no way and he was like i want you to read this um it's it's about it's about um and, and i'm not spoiling anything but it, it's a, it's kind of a kid's book, but it's so deep. Um, it's a, it's just about a seagull who's uh, learning to fly and, and wants to be great. Um, and it's, so it's almost becomes like a manual for, for being great and, mm. and for, for whatever it is, however you want to apply it to your life. Um, it's awesome. It's an awesome book. And so yeah, Jonathan Livingston Seagull. Cool. I wrote it down. I'll definitely check it out. That's what's up. Yeah, And it's an easy read. It's like, it's pretty fast, but uh, yeah. So I've been into Kobe too. Cause Kobe like just basically stopped himself after MJ, like a hundred percent. Absolutely. Like Kobe's like their tapes where it's like Kobe and, and MJ, it's exactly the same moves and stuff. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was sad when he died, but Kobe's like oh, my yeah. new like favorite guy. When you liked MJ back in the day, I was a Barkley fan. Yes, you were. And the Suns. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I remember I had the new Air Jordans, you would have the new Barclays, like we were totally obsessed with, uh, we dressed well, we always had the, the Well, we had all that kicks. stuff too, we had, yeah. the, I mean, the Jordans that I remember, when we got into Jordans, it was Jordans 5, I think was like the first one, and that was like 5th or 6th grade, Right. so yep. that would have been like 92, yep. or, 90, or 91, 90, 90, 91. Right, right, 91, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, the 5s and the 6s, the, the black jordan six infrareds is still oh, my favorite they're so good and i know you had this pair but the the mm-hmm. fives the white um red uh fire red is it called i forget um, i'm not sure but it was the white with the red and the black and I, yeah. i'm pretty sure you had, had those i did i know i did too oh they, i had great yeah they were great yeah. <laughs> no i still love that shit i still real talk i still buy air jordans and keep them in the box um if i see a cool pair come out 
I will, I will get them. Uh, I yeah, love it. Yeah. That's a whole other market. There's so yeah. many rabbit holes out there. Yeah. I have sure. a couple cool pairs, but I haven't, I haven't gone down there. Um, yeah. But every time I see the five or a six though, I'm always like looking at it. For sure. Yeah. 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 Nike's been pretty crazy. I, I haven't gone in a while, but like just being signed up to their, their website and like, you know, being on the list of like drops and seeing some of the drops, people are crazy with it, man. Like they've made, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it goes too far. It's, yeah. it's definitely like, there are people who are like, I, I make jokes to my buddy, um, Harvey, who he's really into sneakers and he's got some awesome stuff. Yeah. But like every time it's like, these are the Jordan eights, uh, that are commemorating like something like literally make it up that, yeah. you know, Charlie Brown and the peanuts, <laughs> uh, you know, when Charles Schultz died and it's right, like right. the Charles Schultz special Michael Jordan eight. And it's like, dude, but they're yellow right it's yellow. right, right. They're, 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 they're stupid <laughs> yeah um and people but people like get into that, that stuff um and that's fine because look at me i have all these bottles behind me right um, right stuff that i would be explaining in a way you'd be like okay um, right right but yeah so there's a sneaker shop in jenny's um office so she's in an office building it's like an oh. old house and she's yeah. on the second floor and um a, a sneaker shop just opened up on the first floor um and it's the type of place where you walk in it's all vintage stuff on yeah. the shelves and uh they like music and stuff and i walked in there and they were all standing around some of the, they were like holding up like purple shirt and i, and I, I was like what's what's going on they were like dude tupac wore this no and way so, like I, I don't know if it was true yeah <laughs> but it was just like one of these things i'm like this place is hilarious yeah that's awesome <laughs> but, that's cool as shit and then that would be hard for me like if if uh yeah i would be there all the time I'm very weak when it comes to like cool stuff like that. Even like, but um, it makes you feel good though. Like you, when you look at it, you know, like it's totally. just nostalgic. Yeah. Yeah. I had, um, I had an amazing Jersey collection. Um, you know, I, I won't get into how I lost the Jersey collection. Somebody stole them from me, but, uh, I had, I had, uh, a bulls Jersey that was bought from like a, a, a bulls <laughs> game, you know, like it was an official Jersey. I had, the remember the USA, the, the first dream team mm -hmm. jersey. I had the Jordan jersey of that. I had so many different variants. And then I started to get like obsessed with like um, you know, European football, aka soccer. And then I my jersey collection got crazy with that. Um, the, all those are gone <laughs> now too. That's a whole nother story. But like um, yeah, I totally that's a whole section of like collectability and all these things that like I that's kind of what got me to do this show was like. I've always been obsessed over collecting things like records. I'm, you should see my record collection now. If, if it was you know cool before, it's ridiculous now. Mm -hmm. um, anything like collectability, like especially now that it's cool and everybody kind of gets it, um, it's just made it like really fun. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, it's usually crypto involved in the topics, but like for me personally, like those are the, those are the, the fun things for me to get into is like, I wish I could talk about records more on the show. I just don't think anybody would really care, but like, I'm hoping I to have start records. You do. I, I didn't go, I'm sure as deep as you did, but um, no, I, I, I bought a bunch of records and I still listen to them. Yeah. You know, and that's, there's every, for everything, there is a rabbit hole. Um, like with records, it's like, oh, you have to get the Japanese press, like, right, and, right. and like <laughs> the limited, like whatever. Yeah. It just gets crazy. Yeah. I'm, my thing is I obsess, I go to Reddit. Reddit will tell you when a new drop happens at the moment it happens. So then you go to the Reddit vinyl release list and you try, you know, you see what's popping that day, see what, see what happens. And the goal is always like, okay, the band's website first edition this color variant there's only a few hundred or whatever and the goal is always to get the early version and then the way vinyl's been going over the last few years if you catch a pre-sale and you get it you get a pre-order and then it sells out and it's something decent by the time it gets to your house three four five six months later depending on shipping now with everything in covid um it might be four or five times worth what you paid for it already yeah. just because it sold out all the way back then People have been wanting it all the way. Then you get it. And yeah. people have been, yeah, it's been interesting. I remember like uh, when Daft Punk announced that they were not going to make music anymore, like suddenly it was impossible to get a Daft Punk. <laughs> yeah, that was actually. <laughs> like any of them. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that too. There's been some interesting ones. There's a band called Turnstile. Uh, it's like the most, 
I've, it's, I've never seen a hardcore band go so mainstream before and this not in a bad way they just they made the perfect album that was the perfect storm and it was the, like the number one selling album for a little bit like and still so hard to get that one became available um i think it was like 50 some dollars and what's funny is that the original record was 21 dollars. you know what i mean but they put out a very small run of like a different color yeah. i never spent that 50 some dollars so fast you know what i mean like mm-hmm. real shit i i that shit was on my radar, but it was only because like, I'm huge on like, um, I like hybrid, hybridization. I like when people break out of boxes. I like, all right, hardcore and punk. Some people are like, oh, keep it underground. Right, that's the old days. Now it's like, kind of like what Metallica did for metal. Like they just did for punk and hardcore, which was only good for everybody else in the scene, you know? So I was very yeah. proud to see that. You know me, I, I love my hardcore and punk rock stuff. So like, mm-hmm. I was really happy to see that. And that's kind of like how I go about uh, just how, you know, how I rate um, what I'm collectible things. Like um, it's more like what I'm obsessed with and what I care about, but also I'm not hesitant. Like if something's going to drop and I don't care about it, I might get it to flip it, but like, I, it's not, it's not the same. I'm kind of, ju- I'm go- going off on side notes here i'm sorry man i, I knew this was going to happen at some point because i'm no it's it's really easy like when, when i've been going off on tangents i'm trying to like control it because i'm like i know what your show is about but right, I, right. I also think that's makes makes things interesting tying well, it all together you know anybody who's watching and just wants to hear about crypto they're probably on the wrong channel anyway like real talk like from the very beginning i've tried to make sure that it was like the most versatile art and crypto channel on the web you know, and the word art comes first for a reason. Like if it's not art. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't even realize like that's branding it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So like collective collectibles, things like that. That's why I try to bring in like artists, you know, like Android Jones, like, yeah, you can't get one of his NFTs for cheaper than 25 ether. And that's like totally the low end, but that's not why I brought him on. It was because he's a great artist and like, Mm -hmm is physical you know you can go and buy like a physical piece from him that's really like that's that's what i'd want personally like nfts are cool but like i like tangible things personally like Mm -hmm. at the end of the day if it's in my collection um i like nfts but i'd like that nft even better if i bought that and it came with a physical thing that was limited to that you know and on the blockchain like like you can buy you could buy like a an NFT, and then if it's there's a T-shirt with it, and the T-shirt with it has an RFID chip in it or some way to attach it to the blockchain, so that shirt is really valuable because it's connected to this NFT. Like all those things, yeah, that's kind of what's going on now, and it's been yeah, really that it has my mind going to think about this mm-hmm. in a different way. Like I didn't realize it was so open-ended. It's crazy. Like let me tell you something, and maybe I'll keep this on the on it, or maybe I'll edit it out. It doesn't matter. My first two NFTs, I sold on a website called Foundation. Now, granted, it's really hard to get on Foundation. And I was very lucky to be accepted there and, and get on there. But um, um, the first one I sold was a music NFT. It was just a little animated, you know, um, MP4, I think it was. Um, and 15 by 15, it was like a 20 second loop of this animation. Had some of my music playing and then unlockable content. If you buy it you get this exclusive track and you, you also got like some other stuff with it, but like, just to show like, you know, and that was, uh, I never made a grand so fast on, on a piece of music. I never made a thousand dollars on one of my yeah. songs, just one copy awesome. of the song, you know? So yeah, that was when I was like, Oh man, like, and it, you know, me, bro, you know, me a long time. I've never been all about the money. I think that's been pretty obvious with me. It's not all about the money. It's about freedom. It's about the, uh, you know, financial freedom, life freedom, the ability to creative freedom and finding this. It's like, okay, now I've immersed myself in the world so much that like literally it hits the point where whatever you spit out is just, you know, you get a return on because you, you snowballed this thing. So like you start to become an artist that you sell these pieces and then other people are like, Oh, look, that sold for 1200 bucks last time. So like, then you you build up you know like your own little um you know like you you gain your stripes or you know you get the legwork done Mm -hmm. and people start to respect you so it's been a really interesting part of it where like 
you have to earn it. You have to be part of the community. You can't just go in it and be like, I'm this person and I'm special. Look, I'm famous. People don't give a shit about that. Even if you're a famous yeah. artist, you have to kind of start all over again, which was the most fun part to me was like, okay, anything I ever did with music or anything, it doesn't matter anymore. Nobody knows me from that. Nobody gives a shit. I get to start over fresh and new. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then the challenge is, can I do something with it fresh and new? And that, I like that part. It's been, it's been pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So anything else you want to go over, man? Any questions or last final thoughts you want to say to the people at home? I'm, you know, the floor is yours, dude. No, not really. I mean, other than like everything that I said, like it's, it's interesting to me uh, with, you know, sticking on N NFTs, um, how much creativity can influence all of this and, yeah. and crypto too. I mean, everything, um, you know, the metaverse, like that's all very interesting to me because I mean, creativity drives everything in, in our lives. And like, I feel like I like to, uh, I, I want to learn more because it's, I want to be part of that because sure. I feel like maybe I have something to offer it, even if yeah. it's just in the way that I invest, if not contributing on the NFTs. Um, it's really cool. And I'm glad to see the creative people are driving something like this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I awesome. appreciate it. Hell yeah. Well, listen, we got a big team uh, here. Not too big. We got about six or seven people total and Nifty Dimensions. But uh, dude, you're always welcome. Anything you want to get involved in or be part of, I'm just going to keep you posted on everything we're doing now that you said that. And if you want to get involved, I already know you and care about you enough and trust you enough artistically to know like it would be worth it. I've been purposely trying to bring you in from the beginning. Like, come on, man, you'd be great at this. You know, there's opportunities here. Like I said, it's not all about the money. I just want to leave a good mark on the planet before I leave personally, something cool, artistic, and, you know, maybe for people to remember down the road. And I feel like this is a cool way to do some fun things for the future. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's awesome. Awesome. Dude, I can't thank you enough for coming on to the show, sure. man. And I, I want to do a shout out to Chris and whiskey neat, like, um, because without all that happening, like, you know, I, I wouldn't have even have known, you know, I, I wouldn't have been so caught up with what you were doing and see how you were into all this awesome stuff. So shout out to Chris for that, man. Um, and yeah, that's been great watching your episodes too. Thanks, man. I appreciate awesome. it. Thank you. I'm trying to bring it, you know, I'm bringing the heat. I, there's a lot more coming this, uh, you know, this new year, I got some, I got some plans. I'm going to hold back the secrets for now, but we got an NFT collection, a handmade clay NFT collection dropping uh, shout out to everybody watching who bought any of our NFTs so far. And a little clue. Um, I've been leaving secret messages at the end of episodes, maybe a mathematical riddle or something like that, but I'm going to spare everybody the time right now. And I'm just going to tell you if you're holding one of our NFTs under sacred seven crypto fluffs, Freeman fly, or now the bomb drops, uh, it qualifies you for the whitelist in the future, which will be for all exclusive things, uh, including our Discord special invite, where you'll get the inside information of what we're doing and get in early on stuff. And uh, just a shout out to the viewers out there, or a little heads up to the viewers, I should say, out there, um, and a shout out to the people who invested. Uh, there's only been a few people, but uh, thank you to everybody who's invested in the NFTs, and we got some special stuff coming up for you. Um, Todd, thank you so much, man, for coming on to the show, dude. I very much appreciate it. Yeah, man. Great to see you. Awesome. Glad definitely. to share a couple of drinks virtually also. Hell yeah. Yeah. It was fun, man. I feel great right now. Um, so to everybody watching, uh, please check out the links below. I'll have links to everything. Um, I'm going to definitely going to try to find a link for uh, Mike Marino's brand because he's one of my boys and I'm very proud to see he's doing something like that. So I'll have all this up for you. And, uh, Thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope you appreciated this exquisite interview with Mr. Todd Group here. I will see you all very soon. Much love and, of course, peace.